It's one of the hottest tickets in town on many a London listing. Alexandra Palace is the place to be this week as Snooker's top 16 battle it out for one of the sport's most prestigious prizes, the Masters. And there is excitement in the air. Ronnie O'Sullivan due in any time now. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Alexandra Palace and the 2015 Daffabet Masters. Four players already through to the quarterfinals. The first round continues. A sellout crowd here at this iconic London venue to welcome back the reigning champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's going for his sixth Masters title as the debate continues. Who is Snooker's greatest? Let's face it, Davis. I'm the greatest. Five massive achievements. Start with this. Six Masters titles. OK, I'll give you that one. I mean, I've managed three, but I mean, I know a man who's on five and could very well be six, Ronnie O'Sullivan, this year. So, you know, you're not exactly that far ahead of him, are you? Still ahead. Yeah, OK, yeah. Well, take the UK championships. Ronnie's on five, but I mean, I won six. Six UK. They considered the UK championship the player's player event. How many did you win? I only won five, yeah. which really hurts me. How many times were you in the final and lost? I lost five finals, which hurts me even more. So your strike weight was terrible, really, if you think about it. But let's move on to world championships, the most important one. What? How many? Six and a half. Half? Well, I'm, I'm, that black, was, that's like a half. How many? You won seven. OK, you seven. won seven. Are you going to count the seniors now as well? Might do, <laughs> yeah. OK, well, world championships, yeah, fair enough. But Ronnie's on five. I mean, you're not far, you know, you... But... But it's the one that matters. OK, fair enough. But then, you know, I, I also may give you the fact 147s is, is yeah. sort of... Have you made one? Yeah, well, I won the first. I made the first. It was like the Roger Bannister of 147s. Okay. Okay. Well, I made 11. 11? Yeah. OK, fair enough. What did you get for yours? A lager. Well done. What did Still you driving it? No, it's a little square. <laughs> it's a little square now in a, in a tip. What did you get for yours? I think got £167,000, if I remember. You get a few ladders for that. Oh. Oh. Oh? B-E. M. Yeah, I mean, but that's like, <laughs> that's like a Boy Scouts medal, isn't it? Oh. I think I think I've got you on that one. That's nice. <laughs> well done. Yeah. And let's take century breaks. Yeah, this one, this one I think is uh, 775. Yeah, okay. You've been a pro how long? 50 years? Something like that. How many you made? 356. How many? 356. In a glittering career. Um, but What's that an average about? Five a season? <clears throat> three. Um, <laughs> but Ronnie O'Sullivan is on 773 and probably will surpass you this particular tournament. Yeah, and I really hope I'm commentating that match. So do we. We all hope you're commentating. <laughs> but all in all, I mean, I think Ronnie's obviously the best player in the world. Well, there's no doubt about it. And to be honest, a few of the records, it's only a matter of time, but it doesn't make any easier. I mean, how would you feel when I was breaking all yours? Terrible. I've got that to come. And this news just coming into us, we've had to send in security to break those two up. So, John Parrott is here this afternoon. John, end this discussion once and for all. Who's the greatest? Well, it wasn't Waldorf and Statler there, that's for sure. <laughs> this boy here playing today would, be, would get my vote. I suppose, in many ways, we're looking at a different Ronnie O'Sullivan, aren't we? Post-York. There was something about him, the way he played his snooker, and also just how relaxed he was around the venue. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, Steve Peters, who's been working with him, has been a massive help to him. It's, it's strange, really, because generally when you get to 34, 35, you start to get on the slide as a snooker player. There's Ronnie, 39 now and there's no wane in his power, seems to be playing as well as ever. And there's a sellout crowd here, no disrespect to Ricky Walden, but let's face it, the reason why the fans have crammed into Alexandra Palace today is to see Ronnie O'Sullivan. No doubt about it, we had 1,500 seats last year, they put an extra 200 in, it's going to be full this afternoon, the place will be bouncing, and this is his venue, he loves playing in London, he can play, go home to his own house, do his practice there, come back, perfect tournament for Ronnie this. However, it's a nightmare scenario, isn't it, for Ricky Walden, because we were here last year 
John, when he was absolutely destroyed by Ronnie O'Sullivan, 6-0 in the quarterfinals. I know, and the funny thing is, he had a 100% plot success rate in that match. He had a 35 break and never saw the ball for the next hour. O'Sullivan was absolutely sublime. And he's just got to, you know, he's got to have selective memory today. He's got to forget that match, come here today, new slate, start off scratch. OK, John, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. So we've already lost Judd Trump and Mark Selby. Can Ricky Walden provide a real upset at this year's Masters? Technical. When it comes to ball striking, Ricky Walden is in the top echelon. The highest praise I can give is that his hitting action reminds me of Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ricky is one of the tallest players in the game, and his back leg is bent to allow him to get lower to the table. It seems that he tilts his head forward more than most players. Perhaps it's less strain on his neck. The only technical consideration for this is that he needs to keep his eyebrows well trimmed. His bridge hand is close to the cue ball. That impacts on how much power he can generate, but it does make his delivery of the tip to ball more accurate. Tactical. If it's on, he usually goes for it. Nobody gets that choice right every time, but Ricky seems to have found a balance between aggression and caution. Inevitably, some frames become scrappy, and Ricky can sometimes get bogged down. Match play is all about doing whatever it takes to win the next frame, and he still has some work to do in this department. Psychological. He's been in three ranking finals, all in China, and won them all. He doesn't lack self-confidence against the big names or on the big occasions. It took him eight years to win his first ranking final. He now has three, but if he wants to move to the next level, he has to add one of the majors to his CV. Well, this is the fifth meeting between Ricky Walden and Ronnie O'Sullivan. The current UK champion won the last meeting 4-1. Uh, last season's Welsh Open on his way to winning that title. Walden's win was in the final of the 2008 Shanghai Masters. The players are standing by. First, let's go to the commentary box. John Parrott is with John Virgo and Steve Davis. Yes, Jason, certainly am, and be listening to uh, your boys' words this afternoon. And There's always an air of expectancy when O'Sullivan comes to this venue, John. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's in London and that's where he's based and uh, he's not disappointed in the last few years. He's given some great snooker and, uh, yeah, the place is buzzing. Now, he's 39 years of age, Steve, and usually, generally, snooker players, you're 34, 30, start to go a little bit on the way. Not happening with Ronnie O'Sullivan, is it? No, it doesn't seem to be the case. Obviously, I think he's the exception, uh, but he's, he keeps himself in, in, in good physical condition. And I do think that he's probably going to push the barriers back uh, going into his 40s as a winner more than myself, Stephen Hendry, and some of the other players we see on the circuit. Now, John, you're Ricky Walden. You've had a couple of thumpings the last couple of times you played. Certainly one here in the same venue. How do you approach this match? Well, you know you've got to play well, or that is the aim. I think sometimes the pressure is when you're playing someone like Ronnie, you feel as though you've got to play too well. You know, it just puts pressure on you that you cannot miss a ball. Well, Ronnie's beatable and uh, he nearly lost in the UK Championship, but at least Ricky can come in this with a clear mind, thinking if I play well, I get chances, I've got to take them. But uh, how many chances he get and whether he can take them, that's the question. Now, not too many people give you a drubbing over the years, but uh, how would you approach a match like this, Steve? Um, I think um, if I was Ricky Warden, I'd be sort of trying to think, well, it's very unlikely that the same storyline unfolds that often in snooker. Um, and if you look at the first frame, how much that, how important that can be in a match, and a first frame encounter in one frame is, is not necessarily 50-50, but it's roughly that can sometimes dictate the way the match goes. So just be optimistic, and if you get the chance in the first frame, that can dictate the play. OK, boys, thanks very much. Look forward to listening to you this afternoon. Let's get the players out into the arena with Rob Walker.
Thanks, John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The atmosphere is normally pretty good here for the Daffabet Masters, and there's a genuine sense of occasion here at Ali Pali because this packed crowd are ready to roar for two world class players. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Please welcome a player making his fourth appearance at the Masters. Earlier this season, he secured his third ranking title at the International Championship in Chengdu. Now firmly established in the world's top 16, he will be seriously up for this. Here comes Chester's Ricky Walden. <laughs> His opponent. What a record he has in this, his home tournament. Ten finals, five titles, and in his 21st year at this event, he is still performing at the very top of his game. He's the reigning UK champion, he's the defending Masters champion. Blink and you'll miss him. The Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, what an atmosphere, as you expect, when Ronnie O'Sullivan's playing, and that's something that Ricky will have to cope with. There won't be many, if you like, on his side. It's a lonely place out there, Stephen, when you're playing someone like Ronnie. Thank you, yes, the first frame. can be. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Ronnie's trademark. Well, the camera's down, please. He's several that have got white lights on. Left-handed break. Prefers that. Of course, John, Ricky Walden has got on his CV a very credible win over Ronnie O'Sullivan in a ranking event in China. So he knows he's capable of performing at that level. Just a little bit thin with that safety shot. You saw all the cameras lined up. There you go, it's like being at the Stretford end of Old Trafford. Well, it looks as though there may be a path through to this red on the left hand side of the table now. Close, very close, but not quite there. And he's nicely on the black, but of course, needed the red. Now, Ricky may take this on. The only red he could leave is the one he's playing, and if he just stuns it in, he'll be in nicely on the blue. Early days, understandable. It's a straighter shot, but just getting that nice feel that you had on the practice table of pushing the cue through straight is sometimes not as easy when you get out in the match arena. Gonna get another chance here to test his cue action. This is the one he played here. And just didn't really get it. It was straight enough, didn't hit it straight. 
he was wide. And while he was playing that, he refused the, the red to the right corner in favour of the safety. Interesting. It's a tempter here for Ricky Walden, but there's also danger involved with that red by the black. Well, Steve, I think it's pretty clear to see that he's come out with a game plan. You were mentioning just before the start of the match how important the first frame was and it looks as though he's not prepared to take any undue risks. Wants to try and get this first frame under his belt if, if possible. Played the safety shot there and he's missed Jones and that's the problem and that's what Ricky will have to put up with this afternoon. Every time he leaves an opportunity, you're going to hear the shouts for Ronnie. There's Jimmy White watching and it was just as bad when Jimmy was playing here. He used to get that same kind of support. Oh. They love cheering on one of their own, and, and why not? Four. Five. Ronnie doesn't always go into the pack at every opportunity, picks and chooses, but um, at some stage those reds have got to be disturbed. But he has such confidence in his ability to work around the black Ten. that he's decided to get that into open play first and then try and disturb the pack later. Mm, didn't play for this red, though. Oh, but he's played it beautifully. He played for the other red, just didn't bounce high enough. Now it's worked to his advantage. And that red that's just below the pack could be used as 18. a ball to break open more reds. Doesn't look 90. like a magnificent chance, but in a couple of shots it may well be. Yeah, I'm sure he'd have rather play for the thread into the right corner. But he didn't leave himself a very good angle on the black, so I had to force it. 27. I mean, potting that red, he just nudged one into play. If you can hear a noise, that is the rain, folks. It's absolutely teeming down outside. Well, they say how he's under Palace. I think it's still got the glass roof. It was a reminder of all those years ago when the 
at the World Championship, I think it was 1974, and uh, Fred Davis was playing Alex Higgins, and it started raining in. And there was that wonderful picture of them both stood under an umbrella. <laughs> Thirty-four. This is not ideal. He's, he's managed to get a chance at potting the black and splitting into the pack of reds. Probably just glance off the far side. Ronnie O'Sullivan, thirty-five. Mm, surprising miss. Yep. Yeah, I think he's, to some degree, momentum was. Uh, Halted by the rain, which really stops play. Chance for Ricky here. And a nice start. Well, not a bad way to get off the mark with an unmissable plant. Yeah, certainly a chance now to get right back in this frame. He's got problems, of course. The three reds on the right-hand side of the table, the red on the left-hand side of the table near the cushion. They're going to be problems, Seven. so just concentrate. That's what he'll be doing at the moment, just to reduce his arrears. Eight. For those of you who have never seen Ricky Warden play, very fluent, very talented amongst the balls. Doesn't waste too much time. Thirteen. Yes, he's a busy player, Ricky, isn't he? He's always moving about and having a look at different things. Forty. As I say, after this black, he's got the two easy reds in the middle of the table, and then the work starts. Obviously, those three reds on the side cushion are a uh, twenty-one. Pretty big target to cannon into as a top-class player you would expect to get some sort of opportunity oh, oh. terrible kick a monster kick Ricky Walden 22 well that was scary wasn't it just watch the black it just went straight on it just went straight on well, at least Ricky can see the funny side of it And now Ron is to sort out. Quick glance at the scoreboard. This black will put him 21 points in front. So still looking for three more reds. And hard to see where they're going to come from. Nobody could have queued that any better. Eight. And it was just the timing Nine. of the shot. So often happens after a brilliant shot, and Ronnie O'Sullivan will have known how good that shot was. He's a, he's a bit short on this black. He's left himself a lot to do. Yeah, he's knocked it in, and you're right, Steve, because he queued that black to open the reds up so beautifully. 16. And he didn't actually queue the, one, the, the next one as well. But look at this. No effort. Look at the action he got on the cue ball. Superb. Problem now is that he can't guarantee perfect position to get on another red. He should be OK, but oh, didn't want that. Now, as 17. it turned out... Well, a bit fortunate, I think, unless he's dead straight. Well, he's having a look at the red on the right-hand side of the table, so I think he's got a nice angle on this pink just to stun across for it. The pink 
and the red is all that's required. Bit too hard. Can he reach? 23. Just needs to drop it in. No colour needed. 24. Well, that's a very cruel blow for Ricky Walden. You need a bit of help at this game, especially if you're playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. You don't want the balls kicking Fit. in opportune moments, so... Mentally, he's got to regroup. 31. From the crowd's perspective, they've totally forgotten to some degree. That kick. 38. That kick on the black cost any chance that Ricky had of getting right back in that frame. But boy, what a shot he played when he potted the black and open at the reds. And that proved to be the frame winner. Ronnie leads 1-0. So Ronnie O'Sullivan off to a fly. You can see just how disappointed Ricky Walden is there. We'll talk to the boys in just a moment. But just let me tell you, we'd love to hear from you this afternoon. Details on your screen. You can contact us via social media, text and email. Any questions for our panel of experts here at Alexandra Palace today, we would love to hear from you. Use the hashtag MastersClass because I think you're going to be doing a little demonstration later, so look forward to that. But the first question of the afternoon is how good was that from Ronnie? Well, it, it, there's one shot in it that's absolutely magnificent, but Ricky Walden's very unlucky. I mean, that's as bad a kick as I've seen when he's on, he's on the black there, just straightened up. But the shot that O'Sullivan's played to pot the black and, and hit the middle red and take them out is absolutely timed to perfection. It's beautifully struck. Tough shot in itself, just potting. But watch the work on the cue ball here, right the way through the ball. And he hits the middle red, which is the one there, to open them up. Brilliant shot. Yeah, just how tough a shot is that, Stephen? Um, yeah, it's a sort of shot you, you think in an exhibition that this is what he's going to do. But as, as John said, the acceleration from the cue ball once it hits the, the black to, for, 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 for the screw to take effect was, it was just you couldn't hit a shot any better. It was, it was perfect. And it's the worst possible luck, isn't it, for Ricky Walden? Because we've talked, haven't we, about the fact that he's walking out at this venue. He's probably still got that in his mind, the fact that he was completely whitewashed, destroyed by Ronnie in this very venue last year. Yeah, and, and I agree with JV. Look like a little game plan. You know, make sure, don't take too many early on. Unfortunately, let Ronnie in and then of course Ronnie missed the shot got him in the balls and he's just got the chance he wants to take and of course we're back to that kick again it was absolutely shocking kick and um, you know you've done all your best laid plans got your opportunity and then that happens it's really tricky isn't it for Ricky because he's coming to this venue knowing just how bad a day he Thank had you, on that day in the quarterfinals. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's, it's the, the thing for Thank everyone you, playing Ronnie here is to get out of your mind that it's the Ronnie Sullivan show you know you're, you're there to try and win as well okay back to the left. Decent break-off shot, that, from Ricky. And if he's covered the, the left-hand side of the cluster with the yellow, it's very good. Doesn't look as though there's a, a return back to ball for Ronnie. So just having to play the containing safety, leave the cue ball near the top cushion. He just caught it a little bit thinner than he wanted, and, he, and that red careering into the black has left Ricky a chance. Just run a fraction too far. Unless there's a plant, I can only see him getting five points out of this. Just roll it in and then play the safety. It'll be interesting to see what type of safety he plays here. Does he th play the thin safety where he doesn't open the reds? He's close enough. Six. Or does he play it positive and open the reds up? Yeah, I don't think these days you can open them up. Ricky Walden, six. That strongly. The players are <laughs> so good at locking, knocking long balls in and when you can't guarantee where the reds are going to go, players are tending to make sure that they don't trust to luck in that department. Ronnie O'Sullivan played a, a very thin safety in the first frame. 
not wanting to risk sending a red to the other corner pocket. Black's tied up. Any player that can get on the blue perfectly and play the screw into the pack would be very pleased with themselves. Has come out nicely. <laughs> Poor shot from Ricky Walden. Well, if Ronnie's going to get this safe, he's got to get that cue ball near that circle. He's got to miss the green. A flick on the green. Well, does the blue come to his rescue? Just about. And he's got a chance of a pot. That's about all he can do is to try and cut this red in. It's got a big pocket as well. He could play to overcut the red. He could go in off the other red by the corner. Two chances. Wow, that's unbelievable, isn't it? In between. Well, oh, that's no guarantee. He can see the red. Not yeah. too sure it's certain, though. I don't think the red near the side cushion pots, does it? No, and I don't necessarily think the double kiss would send the other red in either, so... Sometimes if you could hit full ball on the red that's on the jaw, it will double kiss in, but I don't think it does. Playing a, a cannon here, is he? Yeah. Or perhaps a thin cut, knocking it along the cushion. Great shot. <laughs> not an easy chance, though. Blue's now off its spot, so not many chances to get the balls open. Well, even for a genius positional Great. player like Ronnie O'Sullivan, this is going to be tough. Well, you could hear oh. aside from Ronnie. He misjudged the contact off the second red. I think he had an eye on the pink to the middle. It certainly looks like a goal, but he just caught the second red all wrong and finished on nothing. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. That's not the best safety shot he's ever played. Could have made it a little bit more difficult for Ricky than this. I think Ronnie, Ricky's got a relatively easy four cushion safety. Don't think he can get it in behind the green, though. Okay, but not perfect. I don't know if this red goes past the black, does it? Yeah. Good cue ball, though, even though he's a way out with a pot. Yeah, I think the pot was only secondary in his mind, really, wasn't it? He wanted that good cue ball, and now Ricky has got to play a good safety here. Yeah, he doesn't know where the reds are going either. One could go towards the corner pocket. Or even in. Oh, it's not gone right there for Ricky Warden, but he was under a bit of pressure. Yeah, well, that's two reds that looked certain as though they were going to drop, and, and he can't. Understand it, he's a little bit bemused. This looks in for all money. Probably cushion first for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Swing the cue ball round. Hopefully, get out for a bulk colour. One. He could have played that differently, but he decided to make sure he had an angle on the green. Cushion first would have meant he'd have been straighter on the green. 
Yeah, and to be fair, the way he played it, I mean, he nearly ran past the black and had the black on. And as you say, always with the noise that the green was over the far corner. Found a nice pass here. Oh. Needs to miss this red and bounce. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Oh. He certainly looks in good form. He's queuing the ball beautifully. Well, if that was played, it was marvellous. Five. Just missed the yellow. He gave himself every chance to get balls into play. Perhaps a bonus that he got on that red. Perhaps genius at work. OK, well, blue's not in its spot. Makes this break a bit more difficult. 12. Thirty. If you can bring the cue ball down the left-hand side of the table, those three red just below the pink are available into the right corner. Just needs to slow up a touch. It's OK if the middle one goes. Fifteen. And it does just about. It'd like to have been straighter on it. But it's possible. So was the end one. Okay. I mean, it's one of those positions you'd like 16. to retain position on the black and stay in the business end of the table, but he wasn't able to, to do that. So he's just going to show a little bit of patience now. And of course, when that cue ball keeps travelling up and down the table, it's very hard to get pinpoint position. Cue ball's not coming down a very good line. I don't think he'd be on anything. 19. <clears throat> Might have a speculative double with an element of safety. Ronnie doesn't like losing control of the table, even in the safety department, but this may be worth a risk. And that's why Ronnie professionals don't 19. like playing doubles, because the problem is if the, the ball doesn't go in the pocket, catches the bump of the middle pocket, you're never certain where it's going to finish. And he may have left half a chance here for Ricky. Yeah, it wasn't a nice chance. I think if he'd have played the shot playing ball, he'd have got a lot closer, but he was trying to... Retain control of the cue ball. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has an outside sniff of the second red in from the left as a shot to nothing. Tough one. Judging by that, he didn't even bother to play it. Ricky Warden, once again on that bottom cushion, may be forced to only play a containing safety to the top cushion.
may be a possibility here of a pot on. There's a red. That red I'll circle there. I think you can get to the edge of that and maybe play the pot. It's pretty clear down the left hand side of the table. If he tries to play safe down the right hand side of the table, of course, he's got the problem with the red near the right hand cushion. I think he'd have played it by now, John, if he was going to. It may be a bit tight squeezing through the gap. Yeah, so it looks as though he's playing a containing safety. But be careful though, you might get the double kiss here, then it could go all wrong. Okay, but no real advantage from playing that. But you get that feeling sometimes, as long as you don't leave a pot on. Oh, he may well have done. Reasonably well, but yeah, he may well have done. He lost control of the cue ball a bit. I think this red went, but uh, just flipped the other one on the way through. Well, Ricky will be itching to get amongst the balls, but can he find a pot that has a good percentage of safety involved as well? I'm not sure he can. Red's going everywhere. He's got to be careful of this. It's a tempter for Ronnie O'Sullivan in the middle pocket. There would be an element of safety involved in this shot. But it looks a lot easier on our TV screens than it would be to play. Way he's got the pink to the middle, but you've got to be accurate with these. Mind in opening those reds up, Ricky Warden. Not exactly got what he deserved, but eight got what he feared. He had to play that shot, try and put his opponent under pressure. But Ronnie O'Sullivan was up to it with a great strike into the middle pocket with an element of a shot to nothing. And now he's in prime position. Ricky Warden staring 2-0 in the face. It's not been 15. a good start, not the start he wanted. Hmm. Ronnie just under hit that shot. Oh, but recover the situation. Now it's about say nice. He's slightly hampered on this pink. Ooh, it's not there. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Considering 16. he was hampered, he got down and played it pretty quick. I think it needed a bit more care and attention there. So Ricky Walden comes back to the table. Maybe just put a little bit of unwanted side on that. Ricky Walden comes back to the table, just 33 points behind. Not the nicest of openings. He just get past the black with his cue. It was missable. It was missable, but he'll be disappointed he didn't get it. Yeah, as you say, Steve, it's missable, but you know or you feel when you're playing someone like Ronnie, you've got to take those opportunities. One. The problem is for players playing against Ronnie O'Sullivan, as you say, John, when they do get chances, at that added pressure, on something that really should be a given is is a problem. You know, you, you should be past that mark, but you can't afford to 
even take anything for granted. He'd be a lot happier if he gets a frame on the board. Eight. He's out of position here. Yeah, he just misjudged the pace of the cue ball again. So he's this good. yellow will put him 43 points in front, so he's looking for one more red after the yellow. And it's not obvious where the red comes from. He could try and get back down on the red by the green, swing it around the angles. Tough shot. Decided it wasn't on. And second double in this match for Ronnie O'Sullivan to clinch the frame. Ten. Yeah, that would have been the frame clincher, but just a fraction out. But it's not a bad lead, 43 points a lead, 51 remaining. And the way the balls are situated, even if Ricky Walden gets an opportunity, you wouldn't fancy him winning the frame in one visit. Although that's opened up things a little, li little bit. I would have loved another roll of the ball on that shot. Good safety opportunity behind the black here. Oh. I wasn't thinking of that one. I thought he had another shot on. Well, that's not so good. I think he missed a trick there, John. There was another type of safety shot off the other red. Mm. I suppose, the, by virtue of the fact he was slightly hampered queuing, here's a chance for Ricky, though. Well, these balls are just refusing to drop at the moment. Yeah, and he hit that well as well. That was a great strike. Can count himself a bit unlucky. Well, Ronnie's not totally settled down in this match. There's hope for Ricky Walden. It's a risky shot, but he could play... One red onto the other and screw back behind the black here. Yeah, good call. <laughs> and it looks as though he has got Ronnie Snooker on all three reds, so well, he's got to be careful here. Well, there's a gap. It's a brave shot now to pot the red and get the green into play, but that green is an important ball in Ricky Warden's mind. The only problem is, if you did pot the red and move the green, you're not certain to be on the colour. I think refusing this shot is probably the correct thing to do, but... Yeah, Ronnie's got the advantage now with that green safe. And obviously a score line. Well, that's reasonably good. No easy escape. Back to this top cushion. Let's see how Ronnie goes about this one. Just playing to nestle on the red that's tight to the bolt cushion. Just contained the situation, but Ricky Rowling has still got the upper hand. Mm. Well, he did have the upper hand, but... That red, just sticking out from the brown, or even the one next to the brown, Ronnie's checked to make certain it's not a plant. Leaves him a comfortable safety shot here for Ronnie to get back to this end. Well, having said that, he could have played it a lot better, well short of the intended target, which was near this top cushion. Another gettable red for Ricky Warden. He would like to knock this in, just to get his confidence up 
Bonsoir. And this is a really tough shot along this cushion because now to get the cue ball into play, he needs to put a bit of pace into the six shot. Very missable. Seven. Hmm. Well, I think he may have played for the yellow, but the brown may be available. Just a quick glance at the scoreboard. He can take any colour, 36 points behind. Oh, oh he's missed it. Oh, Ricky. Ricky Walden, seven. He'll be very disappointed missing that one. Well, on that particular one. shot, it was the tension of the moment. That was Ricky Warden, as yet, not having settled down in the match. Yes, and we always say you never really do until you get that frame on the scoreboard. And this one has Eight. gone now. 44 points of difference, just 27 remaining. Ten. So Ronnie made a few mistakes in this frame, but it's not cost him. And I'm certain we'll get a nod of concession from Ricky Walden now. And, and he does, and he's leaving the arena just to gather his thoughts. Ronnie's falling close behind, but the reigning champion leads two frames to nil. Well, Ricky Walden beat Barry Hawkins in a late-night thriller in the first round last year, but it's going so badly for him today. He's just got to take those chances. I mean, he's very unlucky in the first frame with the kick. We mentioned that before, but he's got no excuses there, really. He had, had a few chances, and particularly the last one, we were sitting, Stephen called, he said, you know, play on the brown, not the yellow, play on the brown and get on it. And you'd expect somebody, OK, it's the circumstances, but you'd still expect him to knock that brown in. He can't complain, he's had his chance there. Uh, Stephen, we constantly say it, don't we, at every tournament, when somebody is taking on Ronnie O'Sullivan, that if you are to beat him, if you are mm. to upset the books, then you have to take your chances. Yeah, and, it's, and Ronnie's not been at his best by any stretch. It's sort of bits and pieces from Ronnie at the moment. No, no frames, one and one visit and but uh, Ricky just he's just out of his comfort zone he doesn't look comfortable out there which is disappointing because he is a top 16 player he's won tournaments he's won tournaments this season. he's here on merit as one of the top players in the world so to miss these chances is very disappointing he did have a bit of a shoulder injury at York in the UK championship although he did say over Christmas that it got better and he mm. felt good going into this tournament does he look like somebody who's perhaps had a bit of an injury no he just looks like what Stevens. i think the comfort zone is a very good expression really it's you know it's 1700 people in here this afternoon they've all come and that's you know how many of the 1700 have turned up to see ronnie o'sullivan play you know that yourself but you've got to have a bit of fortitude about you and say right well i'm here to win today as well the moment is not showing too much of that yeah but how much is that down to the fact that perhaps he remembers what happened here last year Stephen? um yeah, it has to leave a scar or something like that. But if you, if you look at that 6-0 result, he did nothing wrong. It's not as if he had loads of chances, and, and, and that, that, would, that would be worse for me if, if, you, if you've lost in a match, you've had chances in every frame. John said earlier on, he made a 35 break, 100% pot success and lost 6-0. He so. just couldn't get in, could he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, know, you can't have a go at yourself if you don't have a pot. Yeah. You know, right. I agree with that entirely. Yeah. And your view on, on Ronnie so far? Uh, John Virgo and Steve Davis, both in commentary, said that uh, so far it hasn't hit his rhythm yet. No, six cylinders, only two in operation, I would think, at the moment. But, um, you know, he's going to get better and he'll get confidence. You know, if he sees his opponents not taking chances, mm -hmm. The worst thing you can do with Ronnie O'Sullivan is show him that. OK. So, Ronnie O'Sullivan leads Ricky Walden by two please. frames to nil. Thank you. The third frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Yeah, I think the biggest problem, picking up on what the lad said in the studio there, is even though Ricky Warden has won events, John, this is effectively Ronnie O'Sullivan's office, isn't it? He's much more comfortable in the one-table arena. He's had much more experience than Ricky. Yeah, a little tap on the table there from Ronnie, that was an excellent, as we look at the points total, 132 points to Ronnie, 35 to Ricky, and it's not as though Ricky hasn't had opportunities, 
He's played a good safety there. Well, he'll have to be careful here. Well, he's knocked a red towards the corner. And kissing the yellow is going to give Ricky the first opportunity in this frame. And I think he can control the cue ball, side cushion with top spin, and come out nicely for the black. Opportunity now in potting the black to carry into the, the reds. He'd still be on that loose red, but you feel he'd want to bring a few more reds into play. And he's just stuck, but he's okay. He's got one to the left middle. 16. Seventy. Yeah. He struck that very well. Three loose reds available. Don't think any others go. Twenty two. Yeah, just looking at the average shot time. Both these players can get round to the 17, 18 seconds per shot. It would be nice if that 23 two ball plant into the right corner was on. I don't think it is. No, not quite. He's got the one to the right middle, which is probably the one he'll play. 30. He thought about the one to the left, but that's a little bit thinner. Should be able to control this. He's just got to be careful with that red that's closest to the right-hand side cushion. He doesn't want to run into that and cover the, himself with the black. He also doesn't want to run out of reds that are available to get good position to smash up the pack. Well, in the end, he decided to play that. A little bit more difficult part, but he, fair play. He's played it well. I think that plant goes. It could be made, perhaps. Ooh, didn't like that much. Well, I'm not quite certain. Well, I'm, 36. I know what he played. He played to kiss the pink full in the face and still have the red to the right middle. But yeah, the only trouble was... If he didn't hit it full yeah. in the face, he was on nothing. <laughs> Mm, I wish he well, too late now. I think he regrets that, looking back on it. If you're going to go into those, perhaps you go into them harder. But he, has a bit, he was a bit thick on the, on the blue. Well, it's a wasted opportunity in many ways. Could take this red on to the far left corner if he was feeling that way inclined. Or maybe he's taking it on to the right corner. No? Well, I don't understand that shot. Where's the blue ball going? Ronnie doesn't want that blue to drop. If it had done and gone on his spot, this easy red to the middle wouldn't have been available. Oh, that was a tough cutback. Especially as he was trying to do something with the cue ball as well. He's not controlled that very well. well. Oh, he's just got enough side on, but he's still not ideal for position. Perhaps you can just roll through for the red into the right corner, although it's a bit straighter than I first thought. Yeah, you'd have to say at the moment his positional play isn't pinpoint, which it normally is for Ronnie. He was able to just screw back a few inches for this red to the middle. Now, Eight. if he's straight enough on it, he can screw back for the black. No. 
Ronnie O'Sullivan. Mm. Eight. It's a bit of a scrappy start to this match. Not caught fire just yet. Well, for all the, the fact that Ricky Walden's reeling out there, he won't be reeling forever if he gets enough chances. Ricky just checking where to put the cue ball to snooker Ronnie on the red behind the green. Yeah, it's imperative he covers that red in the ball, Ken, which he seems to have done. But we just showed you caught a glimpse there of the pot success of ball players. You know, I always say it's got to be 90% or above, really, to win matches at this level, and look at them. Ronnie well below that, 84%, and Ricky Walden just at 73%. That won't win a match. Ronnie just having to play the containing safety. I don't think Ricky can see enough of the red. There's two reds just above that cluster of five. I don't think he can see the, the far one. Look in there. Can he hit enough of it to play the pot? If he could, he'd play it because the blue's over the corner. If he pots the red, he'd have the blue to go at. Can he see enough of it? Coming back to the top cushion, he's going to be spreading all the reds open here, so he needs a good cue ball. I've seen better. Yeah, he's given Ronnie a free shot in a way. There's even pressure on that safety shot to get it tight. Of the cue ball that time. Well, running half out of the tent to the cross double, and it's gone in. If he misses a pink, he'll be on the back. Well, would you believe it? From well, nowhere. Well, he didn't need to play that shot at all, but he just saw it, visualized the shot. Realised there was an element of safety involved as well. It wasn't the fact that he picked it out. It was how quickly he picked it out. Oh, beautiful shot. <laughs> OK, well, it would be harsh to criticise him on uh, not getting position left-handed. Perhaps Ronnie will be disappointed. You think, I don't suppose that was impatience on Ronnie's part, was it? Or did you want to get on with it? The fact he's not been firing yeah, perfectly? Well, I, mean, I agree with you. I think Ronnie he just saw it eight. and thought, well, there's a chance to play the possible cross double and get near the top cushion. But he'd be very disappointed that he only got eight points from it. I think he just saw it and thought, well, I can play the cross double, could go in. And if you watch where the cue ball finished, he wasn't going to leave anything. Well, he'll be disappointed, as I say, that after giving himself that opportunity, he only got eight points. <laughs> well, he's got a good cue ball, but he's left Ricky Walden a chance there, and he can't refuse it. The red to the right of the pink, he's got to play into the left middle. Probably a push shot by Ronnie O'Sullivan there. A lot of players are playing push shots and getting away with them at the moment, I see. Mm, not wouldn't saying disagree. It's, not saying it's uh, necessarily something the referees should be picking up on. Great shot there from one. Ricky Walden 
obviously uh, the tip and the ball mustn't uh, and the cue ball and the, the, the object ball shouldn't be in contact at the same time but um, to some degree every time you play a thin shot across the face when the balls are very clo close it's arguable that's happening anyway anyway in the meantime six he's potted the blue and the Reds couldn't be better situated. He's already got a 26-point lead. And, well, just another 30 points, which doesn't look too difficult. He'll have his first frame on the scoreboard. Under Seven. other circumstances, this would be a 100% chance for R Ricky Warden I think he's probably comfortable enough in the frame that he won't mess up but the problem is if he does 11 what it will do to his confidence not to clinch the frame here and there here and then he's not ideal with the cue ball on this red into the middle pocket but he should get this in Fifteen. And a quick glance at the scoreboard. He'll be thinking he'll need three more reds. He's playing low valued colours. There you see it, 39 ahead, 59 remaining. 19. So the colour, one more red. And he should be safe. Yeah, he'd still need it, he'd still like another red. Two reds would be far better. Hmm. It's not great. 23. 24. Good chances to develop a red here. Hmm, just unlucky to get the double kiss, but 50 points the lead, 43 remaining, 30. two snookers required. And if this red was to drop, I'm sure we'd get a concession from Ronnie. Ricky Walden. Look at the scoreboard, is Ronnie, two snookers needed. Is it worth the effort? Maybe give it a shot. Well, it's only one needed with a free ball, so... Of course, there's a lot of talk about the, the pressures on Ricky Warden to make a statement in this match after the drubbing he got from Ronnie O'Sullivan last season. But there is also pressure on Ronnie O'Sullivan. Apart from the fact of winning, the pressure on Ronnie, I suppose, is to win in style and uh, deliver the goods. That's tough in itself. 
He usually does deliver. But on the days when it's not plain sailing, it's, I'm sure he feels the frustration a bit. This, uh, this red behind the yellow is ideal for a, a good snooker. If, you, if Ronnie can pot red, black. Well, there's the red. What? Needs to be on the black, and he is. Oh. Ricky Warden could, uh, could be in serious trouble here. Wants this cue ball to bounce, though. He wants to be stunning this red. He's not perfect Eight. on this red to play the, the snooker behind the yellow now. And, well, not to make it too difficult. No, just had the wrong... Oh, well, that's, that'll do. That'll do. Where's that one come from, Ron? Looks an easy snooker off the bottom cushion, but Ricky feels it's just as easy this way. So 42 points of difference, 35 remaining. Still equates to two four-point snookers required. Trying to get this in behind the, the black, hasn't done. It's not a difficult hit, this really. Come off the bark cushion, you would have thought, with plenty of left-hand side. Looking down the left-hand side cushion, but surely he can yeah. come off the bark cushion, can he? Yeah, he's got to swerve it a bit to get... curve it round the brown fraction. And then let the side take the, off the cushion. Very nicely played. might be able to get behind the black from this shot. Didn't feel he could. It's not a snooker, I don't think, unless it rolls a little bit more. Nope. Mm -hmm. Just a little swerve, that's all that's needed. You won't expect him to miss this. The way the balls are situated, now there's no value really in potting this red. You'd like to keep the red on, and as Steve said earlier, then you could have the possibility of a free ball. And that wouldn't have been too well. If the brown is sneaking him on the red, that's a head scratcher. Uh, a bit lucky there. Lost control of the cue ball. But has now given Ricky Warden. A nasty one. That's amazing, isn't it? Let's have the player's view. Oh, is there a coat of paint sticking out? I think Ricky Warden's got to play round the back of the green and make sure he doesn't go wide on the shot. Effectively, he'd be better off missing on the right-hand side of this red and hitting the brown. At least he wouldn't leave a free ball. Good shot. Yeah, good hit again, but it's hot in the mouth time at the moment for Ricky. I'm trying to get behind that yellow again. Mm, it's not a bad line and it's not a bad length. It's excellent. Well, I'd be astonished if Mick Ricky Warden misses this off the left-hand side cushion. I do feel as he should go left-hand side, but he's he's eyeing up right-hand side, left. Well, that's the right-hand side, and you you could be right. To me, coming down left-hand side is a bit more of the black coming into play. 99% certain to hit this. How about potted it? How about potted it? 
Well, Ronnie will have to pot it now and play for the black. And that means he'll need two snookers on the yellow. One. But he's been playing some excellent snookers. Pots the black. Puts him 34 points behind. 27 remaining. Two snookers required. And there's no Eight. other way around this. Just trying to work out if he potted yellow, green, brown and blue. He'd still want two snookers on the pink, so... Well, it's a bit careless. Ronnie O'Sullivan, eight. Yeah, Ricky Warden now, big favourite to get his first frame on the board. You'll feel a lot more relieved once that's the case. And there you go, you can concession. See frame. Ricky Walden. Yeah, that's enough for Ronnie. It seemed as though two snookers, his heart wasn't in it to play on. So Ricky Walden will be mighty relieved, gets his first frame on the scoreboard. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads 2 1. Ricky Walden back in this one. How do you think he's feeling now as he pops into that dressing room? Well, a lot better. Um, he didn't win it in one visit. He, he got a 36 break, I think it was, and lost position. He, could, he probably could have played a bit harder into the pack and split him. I sort of played an in-between a shot, but then he got a, a break near the end and it settled into the match. I mean, he needed to show something fairly quickly because you just need to get a foothold against Ronnie. I suspect the big thing when you're playing Ronnie O'Sullivan, you're 2-0 down, nothing's going right for you, Stephen, mm. is not to panic and just hang on in there. Yeah, and as I said, he's an, ex an experienced player. He's a top player in, in the game. So, yeah, he'll, he'll certainly feel more relaxed now he's got that frame on the board. He'll feel that he's involved in the match and, and hopefully he can get this fourth frame and go into the interval level at 2-2. It is just different playing, Ronnie. It, 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 it is... There is an intimidation factor about why it. because of him or because of the crowd or because, well, because of the surroundings everything really a little bit of a little bit of everything you know the crowd there's 1700 people have turned in you know there's more people gone on sickies today to turn up and watch this <laughs> you know everything about it you're playing in his own backyard it's the table you know he's won here before so many times and you've just got to be able to settle down and, and try and play your own game in amongst all of that i'm also getting tweets from people saying that they've taken the day off today and they're thoroughly enjoying the coverage <laughs> Yes, obviously, if you are an owner of a company uh, and you're watching the snooker uh, and you see one of your employees in the crowd, don't complain. Don't complain at all, because you shouldn't be watching the snooker yourself. Apologies, Ronnie. It's noticeable. I think they've been out to the toilet for the, every frame. Um, and whilst the powers that be were trying to stop that, with a big crowd, it's not a bad... And especially if the players are pretty quick amongst around the balls. If it's a slowed game and then players go out to the toilet, how do you feel about that, John? Well, I mean, it can be uh, dragging out a bit, but it seems that ball players have been in and out of the arena quite quick. As soon as the ball seems to have been set up... Can you just take a seat? Almost back ready Please. for play. I find this match a little bit intriguing at the moment. I think Ronnie's getting a little bit frustrated. I mean, his conduct uh, over the last couple of seasons has been absolutely exemplary. As the eye breaks, that won't please either player. But he's had a few chances here, Ronnie, and he's not made the most of them. And if it is two each at the mid-session interval, he'd be disappointed. 
Looks to me at the moment as though he's just looking for something to to fire him up. Yeah, I think he may be a bit frustrated in as much as he he would have sensed that Ricky Warden was all at sea at the start of this match. Would have loved to have kept him there. Five. And all of a sudden, signs that Ricky Warden's starting to get into this game and an ideal opportunity now to split the Reds all over the table. Well, I think that's the wrong shot. He's trying to control that shot. He's just got to blast it. Yeah, he was a Ten. bit tentative, wasn't he, with that? And he's hit the pink well. And as you say, with a bit more pace, he'd have spread the reds far and wide. He's still got a pot on. And he's rolled it in nicely. Eleven. And the cue ball stopped short of the port line. Criticise players on those shots. I mean, you know, you've got you've got the reds open a bit, 14. but it could have easily have gone wrong that way. On the other hand, of course, you smash them to the four corners, and the red drops in a pocket, and then you're unlucky. Fifteen. Tough shout. He'll be a little bit disappointed with that. I wanted to be a little bit straighter on this black. He's not the ideal potting angle here. So in the end, was forced to go into them, but it could have worked out a lot better than that. Yeah, I had to go into the reds again, 22. and I think perhaps that's the... You know, looking from the commentary box, you have a chance to go into the reds to open them all up, and you don't take it, and then you have to try again to open them up, and then it goes wrong. Mm, just wondering if he's had a result. The red is closest to, looks mighty straight to the far corner. And if he just was to dab it in, he'd be on the black. It's a long dab. It's a long it's dab. A long way to go. But it is it. a dab. Nicely struck. As it just got in, perfect shot. Thirty. For all me digging Ricky out, he's still on the table and queuing a lot nicer than he did in the first couple of frames, that's for certain. Thirty-one. Well, he's getting up there now, it's 73% not long ago, now he's 83%, still well below what's required. Oh! Well, the only upside, he didn't go in off. Now, he's asking the referee to clean the cue ball. He feels as though he got a heavy contact, which threw the, the cue ball wide. 36. And do you know, I still think he's got a possibility of a red to the left middle. There was a jump. Oh, look at the cue ball bounce in the air. Lucky not to go in off. Thank goodness for Ricky, it didn't. Yeah, another kick that's cost him... May well have cost him. This would be a great recovery, Red. He'd love to see this going. Ricky Wallen, 36. <laughs> Ronnie looks to have two chances or two opportunities. A Red into either of the bulk corner pockets. <laughs> yeah, struck oh. that nicely and that little nudge on the green hasn't hindered him too much. 
If he doesn't want to come down to this end of the table, he can always just stun it in for that red up in the bulk end. And off this one, he'll be looking for a nice angle. You would think the blue. Four. But this is a chance. It's all about a good positional shot now off this red. Five. Just a fraction short. Probably just checking if reds go into the corner. All three of them go. That looks lovely. From our commentary box position, you wouldn't have thought that, but... He's played that well. I mean, he made it look easy, but he just Ten. stunned it slightly to widen the angle to come off the two cushions. But he's not making the most of these opportunities. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ten. He can't believe it, and neither can I. Not as happy out there as uh, we've seen him recently. Now, Ricky Warden knew that was a massive chance to do some damage, and he was a long way out with that one. Yeah, that was a big shot, wasn't it? After yeah. Ronnie missed there when he was in, I mean, that was a real chance to punish didn't Ronnie. He, didn't even wobble. Huh? Nasty feeling. One. And all yeah. of the damage there, John, that Ronnie had sort of inflicted upon himself now could evaporate. And even though Ronnie O'Sullivan won't be delighted in any way, shape or form with those four, first four frames. He's 3-1 in front. Six. Yeah, you can soon... Uh, Seven. ...put the memory of a bad shot behind you if you win the frame. Obviously talking 3-1 in front, and uh, he's behind in the frame, but... Um, just get the feeling that there won't be many balls left by the time he leaves the table. Fifteen. Yeah, I don't think he'll even need the, the Orchid Brown. He's trying to work it out. If he pots this black, he'll go four points behind. So just four reds, four colours after this. Four blacks would be enough. But you'd think he'd probably need the yellow at least. But the Orchid Brown shouldn't become part 22. of the equation. So let's off here was Ronnie. But that's the game. If you get let off, take advantage of it. Punish your opponent. Ricky Walden failed to do it. I don't think Ronnie will make the same mistake. 30. Thirty-one. Quick glance at the scoreboard. Thirty-eight. Two reds, two blacks would put him 28 points in front with 27 39. remaining. Well, he won't be able to play on the black off this, but as I say, with the yellow and green on the spots, it shouldn't 46. cause a problem. Red, blue and yellow would be sufficient. Dollar pocket there. Dear me. That nearly didn't drop. So 24 ahead, 27 remaining. Pot the yellow, go 26 Fifth. ahead with 25 left. So it's not the best frame he's ever played, Ronnie, but it looks as though it's going to give him a two frame advantage going into the mid session interval. means now that Ricky Walden needs two 55. snookers and when he won his first frame frame three I thought that might just settle Ricky down but wasn't really a sign of it in this frame as the Brown drops in Ricky unfortunately will go 64. to the mid-session into our with just negative thoughts rather than positive thoughts he had his chance in this frame when Ronnie missed 70. when he was in
Zoeing goes to Brian Ruddy. So we won't Ruddy be too pleased with those first four frames, but he'll look at the scoreboard and reflect that he has a two-frame advantage, and he leads Ricky Walden at the mid-session interval by three frames to one. Well, the first time these two players met was back in 2006. It was a remarkably close match, and then there was a close match as well in the Shanghai final match in the final two. But since then, Ricky just cannot get a foothold in any match he takes on with Ronnie Sullivan. Well, this match should be close. This should be two each. Um, he got no complaints about the chances he's had in there, but I mentioned the intimidation factor, <clears> and it's definitely got to be something to do it because he's a much better player than he showed here today, right, uh, Ricky Walden, and he's had his chances to be two each at the interval. What are you seeing, Stephen? Are you seeing an intimidated Ricky Walden today? Yeah, a, a, lack, a lack of composure, really. Um, when, when Ronnie missed that chance there and Ricky got in, he, the red he, he tried to pot to the green pocket, just hit it so hard. Um, and, and that's, as John says, that's not the way he plays. He, you know, he strikes the ball beautifully and it just looks like a, a complete lack of composure out there. I think there's one shot that's come up a couple of times in the match already where nearly all the top players would be going straight into the pack into the pink and playing hard and forcefully and opening the balls up mm. and both times he's played like a control shot one on like a soft can and the other time i mean very it tentative exactly very tentative. It doesn't show any mm. it doesn't show him being positive in playing that shot because so far Stephen, it's been remarkably comfortable for ronnie o'sullivan you know we haven't seen him in free-flowing style like yeah. we saw at the masters last year or at the uk championship in york it's all been very easy yeah he's, he's not been good at all really he's, he's missing balls he's, he doesn't look you know his, his facial expressions he doesn't look Look focused, relaxed um, out there, but he's get, just getting chance after chance. And, and as, as I say, as, as you said, it's, it's comfortable for him. What does Ricky need to do then as he goes back now and contemplate on what's happened over the past couple of frames? Well, him, he's just got to be a bit more positive. I mean, he's got to realise what we're sitting in here. We, we know Ronnie's not playing at his absolute best, so he's got to go out and do what Ricky Walden can do, which is play a lot better than that session. Just needs to be a bit more positive. If he comes up half ball on the blue, get into the pack, get the balls open, and do what you can do, which is score heavily. But do you think instead of sitting in his dressing room, he needs to go back onto the practice tables now? Um, yeah, that, that would be a good idea, I think, just to get a bit of rhythm. Um, because, as I say, it's bits and pieces, but from both players, I mean, you know, Ronnie doesn't normally go into practice practice table at the interval but Ricky yeah, just to get a bit of confidence a bit of you know play how, how, how you know you can play okay boys we'll talk more so Ronnie O'Sullivan leads Ricky Walden by three frames to one at the mid-session interval here at Alexandra Palace we've had a couple of famous faces in the audience over the past two days Chelsea captain John Terry was in the audience last night watching Neil Robertson win Jimmy White was also here yesterday and it's been a very interesting couple of months for Jimmy following the publication of his rip-roaring book he's here today he's been talking to John Virgo well, here we are at the Masters, and uh, it couldn't be the Masters without the legend Jimmy White. Jimmy, uh, the greatest game I've ever seen here was when you played Kurt Stevens in 1984. Your memories? Yeah, it was a, a fantastic game. Kirk had the magical 1-4-7, and then to finish off the match, I was 4-3 up to finish off the match, I had 119, and I played a few flare shots, and thankfully they, they all worked. So. I do a lot of them in exhibitions, people ask me to repeat them, but uh, that was a great match and a great one for seven for Kirk. Oh, what a moment. And I always remember, you know, in the audience was Donald Sutherland. Do you remember? Yeah, that's right. Donald yeah. Sutherland, yeah, that's actor. right. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was like a, a movie set and it worked out that yeah, way. Yeah, I think he uh, was a friend of Cliff's and uh, they'd come to see Kirk, yeah. Yeah, so that was, as I say, one of the great memories. I watched you in there the other day, you were watching Judd Trump, yeah. another left-hander, plays a similar type of game to the one you played. What do you think of him? Uh, I think he's a fantastic player. I still think he's a bit green on certain areas, which is, um, he, he, can, he can play any shot there is on the, on the table, he's fearless, um, fantastic pot. I just think sometimes when he has to play a safety shot or a snooker, it doesn't come natural to him, and I think works on that part of the game, he's going to be up there, but he's definitely um, taking the mantle of the new people's champion. You know, you had the great late Alex Higgins, and now you've got Ronnie O's, uh, myself. You yourself. Sorry, then, forgot me. Yeah, don't forget yourself. Then, because... um, obviously, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Trump is the next player because, you know, there's... What does it take, then, to be a people's champion? Well, I think it's um, the attacking style of the, you know, mm. going for your balls, you know, like... Mm. You're putting yourself um, on the edge if you don't if you don't pot these ridiculous balls. Some of them are ridiculous, but some of them can turn matches, where you know and create chances. No, Sullivan has tightened his game up now. He's more all-round mm. player. That's why he's winning so much with his talent. But Trump's Trump's capable of doing all that, and I think 
people appreciate people who take chances, like in any sport, they like oh, a bit absolutely. of flair. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what I remember about the game when I first came into it. Alex Higgins was the first person to get people on the edge of the seats, yeah. you know. I mean, with the best respect to the likes of Rex Williams, Fred Davis, uh, John Spencer, great player, and Ray Reardon, but it was Higgins who went for that outrageous shot, which, as you say, the crowd wanted to see. Is it a fine line between that balance of attack and defence? Did you have... Well, I know you had problems with it. Did you ever... Was it ever sitting comfortable in your mind? Well, you know, obviously, I went for far too many and it cost me mm. plenty of matches, but I won plenty of matches where I looked like I was going to lose. So that's my style of play. I still play like that. I've tightened up a bit, but I enjoy playing like that. O'Sullivan attacks. Mm. He just attacks, attacks, attacks. His cue ball's so good. When he gets in, you know, he, he, he keeps control of the cue ball. And I think um, Judd's game will get there, but it's not quite there yet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as I say, he's got all the ability, which you need, you know, you've got to be able to pop balls, but it's just that fine line. But I agree with you, he's got a lot of natural ability. Yeah. We've got Ali Carter playing tonight, who's had an horrendous year with illness. You yeah. know all about that. Yeah, well, yeah, and... Um, my my situation when I was when I was ill when I had cancer it was it was sort of dealt with quite quick. He's had to I had an operation. He's had to go through the chemo and um, he's had Crohn's disease apart from that as mm. well. And as you mm. know, he was at the Legends Cup with us in Ireland. Yeah. And um, a fantastic fighter and he's fit now, thank God. And uh, he's playing well and he's really looking forward to this tournament. Yeah. Well, as we, we wish him all the luck. I mean, there's something about playing a tournament in London, I know particularly for you, I mean, I played you a couple of times at the conference centre, I always remember you once apologising for people shouting out, you yeah. know, because obviously they're all rooting for you. Uh, obviously, it'd be great for you to get back to that. Uh, we've got a new book out, The Second Wind. Is there a second wind? <laughs> Definitely, you know, um, as you know, I play you all the time. Um, we do the exhibition tour and um, I'm on the main tour. I've been a couple of matches away from getting to the Crucible. My game's still there, I still love practising. And uh, why it's still there, I'm going to carry on playing. But, you, you know, the, what talking about the tournament in London, we only have the Masters, which mm. is our, you know, our, our big invitation event. It's only 16 months. Mm. I love mm. coming here. You know, I'm working with Daffabet this week, and um, I'm here to support Ronnie O'Sullivan because I love the way he plays. Mm. But. I think why you, you don't have enough tournaments in London. They should have a ranking tournament in London. You know, look at the crowds every day. Oh, they've been, been fantastic. There's been enough um, people coming to watch. There's enough support. So, but the Masters is a very special tournament and um, I'm looking forward to today. Yeah, and it's good out of the transition because we always used to say, second to the Crucible, some people put it ahead of the Crucible, but the Wembley Conference Centre was the venue. Yeah. Uh, this seems to have taken its place. It seems to have slipped in quite nicely, doesn't it? Yeah, I think they've got it right, especially this year. They've put an extra 200 seats in, and um, wherever you sit, you can see the table perfect. The conference centre was a bit special. It, was, um, it had that atmosphere, but I think, um, I think they've got it right here as well. Yeah, so we're talking about the second win. I always found, near the end of my playing days, that... It, it wasn't the actual tournament, you look forward to that, but the motivation to practice yeah. those three and four hours a day, is that still...? I, I, I love the game, you know, and thank God that I've always... You know, the game's still faster. I still get a buzz of practising, I get a buzz playing exhibitions, I get a buzz playing matches. So why that's still there, you know, mm. I'm going to keep going. People say, look, you're, you're 52 years of age. But I look out there and I think, you know, that... Um, on my day, I can still beat anybody, so, you know, they don't come that often. <laughs> but when it does, I win. And I, I, I just, you know, I love, I love being around it, and um, it's what I've done all my life. Yeah, and as, uh, as, as you mentioned a few times, you know, I, I, I do the shows with you, you know, and uh, the game's still there, the queuing's yeah. still there. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a bit harder when you get out on the match table because sure. there's a bit more pressure. Yeah. And as you get older, it's not easy, it's a lot... <laughs> more difficult to handle, but... Yeah, uh, well, I think, uh, you know, I used to sort of... I thrived on the... You know, the way I played, there's a lot of pressure on me to win, mm, just mm. F not just for myself, for other people and all that, and... Uh, but, you know, I, if you're in the zone, you know, mm. you, you love the pressure. Yeah. You, you, that's why people play in it, you know, it's... Um, you get your adrenaline going, and if you win in a big pressure situation, there's nothing like it. 
And of course, you've had those pressures because everybody's, I mean, even now when you're signing autographs, you're going to win the world title, yeah. Jimmy, and all that. And I always love your reply. Yes, next year, you know. No, I'm not. Got to think positive. I'm not finished. You know, if I didn't yeah. think I couldn't win it, I wouldn't play. No, I, I no. I'm not playing it just to win a tournament. You know? But as I say, you do, you can't slip under the radar because there's so much expectancy from all your fans still. Yeah, which is great, you know. And I and I love the support I've always had. And you know, I've had my troubles, which is documented in the book. But um, I've had a lot of support from the public. Well, Jimmy, it's great to see you here. Great to see you at the venue, and you'll be here all week. So uh, thanks for the chat and uh, nice little insight. The wind is still here. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> Love you, sir. Cheers, bud. Love you. What a great interview. And by the way, what a great suit as well. Great choice of colour suit as well. <laughs> Don't you think? Anyway, let's just talk about Jimmy White because I think he makes some really interesting points there, certainly about snooker, about the game. He talks about it being the people's champion and he's yeah. still got that. You know, whenever you see Jimmy White at a tournament, Stephen, the fans are still queuing up to have photos taken with the legend that is Jimmy White. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. And, and I think if he'd won the World Championship once, he'd, he'd have walked to Sports Personality Year. He's, he's, that, he's that popular. Um, so yeah, and I'm sure he would swap one championship for, for a lot of that popularity. He was desperate to win the World Championship. I'm also struck by what he said about attacking snooker because on the many occasions I've sat in a studio with you and we've discussed the way players go about the table, whether it's the World Championship or the UK Championship as well. That's something that has concerned you in the past, isn't it? That a lot of players are not prepared to take risks. Um, yeah, I think it's the only way to play, uh, and, and it really um, so, some some of the shot choices re really really upset me. But you have to. Everyone plays a game differently. Um, you know, I, I seen a pot and I went for it, um, and, and a lot of the time, even to my detriment, didn't really think about the consequences. Um, so I mean, you watch Ronnie now. Ronnie plays quite a percentage game now. Jimmy mentioned that Ronnie's all out attack. I disagree. I think Ronnie plays a really percentage game. But when he gets in amongst the balls, he's devastating. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the likes of Judd Trump has probably got to learn from Ronnie if he wants to progress. But do you think? across the board when you look at the top 16 and those players out of the top 16 too do you think there's far too much caution um i wouldn't say far too much i think generally the, the game is more aggressive these days you, you do see most of the young players going to the pack a lot earlier than, than, than they used to but um yeah i, I think players st still you know I, I, I still like to see a lot, a lot more sort of take the bull by the horn sort of snooker there's, there's still a lot of edginess out there OK, we've been asking you today for your questions via social media and using the hashtag Masterclass. Anything you want to ask our panel of experts, we'd love to hear from you via social media, via text or email. Uh, John Parrott has got a few of those questions right now. John. Yes, thank you very, very much for all your questions and your queries. The first one we've got from Jim here is, can you ask JP to play a shot with the white tight on the cushion, please? What do you do? Well, interesting. There's a couple of things you need to do when you play this shot. First thing is, make sure you've got plenty of chalk on your cue. The second one is what you're always trying to do when you play a bridge hand is keep it as parallel to possible. But of course, with there only being a little bit of the cue ball showing up, you have to raise it slightly. So where you'd be normally there, you just raise the bridge slightly, just there on your thumb and your finger, just to give you a little bit of downward strike. And the other thing is, ordinarily you'd hold the cue round about here normally, you need to go up the cue slightly, you want to have a bit more control. So you walk in on the shot, you've worked your angle out, come up the cue slightly, just raise the bridge ever so, and all you want to do is nice and smooth through the ball, OK? And keep it like that. Someone's very happy with that shot. <laughs> Next one we've got in from Adam Thornton. Thank you very much, Adam. He said, how do you stop the white following the object ball in for a straight long pot? Well, it's pretty simple, Adam. What you've got on there is you're just hitting the ball in the wrong position. So when you've got the cue ball in position, we just use it for the middle pocket just to show you. You need to be the, below the equator of the white. It's simple as that. All you're doing is hitting it in the middle or the top spin instead. You want the ball to either stun or come back. So a stun will be just below the white middle and the screw will be much lower. So if you go nice and low on it and you go through the ball, you won't follow through. You should be able to screw back. Now, the other one I want to explain today, and this was the bane of most of the players in the snooker hall when I was growing up, bridging over a ball, and it affects even the best players. In fact, have a look at this VT. Ronnie O'Sullivan had one early in this match. Ronnie O'Sullivan. So this is one of the shots when I was growing up in the snooker hall that most players absolutely hated. And believe you me, even the professionals don't like it. But if I can give you one or two little tips as to how to approach this shot, it should help you with it. The first thing you've got to realise is it's very difficult bridging over this just to see the white itself. And what you've got to do, rather like Clint Eastwood used to say in his films, a man's got to know his limitations. Well, you've got to know with this shot, you've got to basically make sure that you're in the middle of the white, 
you've got a nice solid bridge to keep it nice and steady and you don't force it because the harder you hit this ball and the higher the cue is coming down the more it's going to bounce off the bed of the cloth so once again like the other shot come up the cue and slightly lessen your grip so when you may be a six or an eight and holding it out one out of ten ordinarily go to a four or a five very lightly and basically what you're trying to do is drop the cue on the uh, on, onto the ball and letting the weight of the cue play the shot for you so you'll walk in you've got your line ready come up your cue nice and soft bridge higher it's also a big help if you happen to be a bit taller but you've got to make sure that your bridge is nice and solid okay and when you're here like this all you're trying to do is let the weight of the cue fall on top of it and hopefully you should pot a few more of those balls like that. It's a horrible little shot, but with a bit of practice, you should get better at it. John, thank you very much indeed. Let's just take a look at the draw then and how it's looking right now at the tournament. So you're fully up to date with how the tournament is looking. When you look at all those players who are through to the quarterfinals, the ones we've lost even, is there anybody in that draw who can challenge that man there? Well, I think Maguire's coming into form. He got to the semi-final in the UK. He won a PTC event just before Christmas. Um, so I would think he looks the main danger so far. But it's vitally important in the context Take of this match quickly, that that please. man there, Ricky Walden, needs to get a good start in this frame. Well, you wouldn't expect Ronnie to keep playing the way he is. You expect, if anything, he's going to get stronger. So Ricky needs to really up his game, really play as good as he can. Remember Ronnie O'Sullivan, the defending Thank champion, you, leading Ricky five. Walden by three frames to one. As we join our commentary team with John Virgo and Steve Davis. Great interview, by the way, Mr Virgo. Oh, thank you, Jason. Well, I've known Jimmy so long, it's not easy for us to sit down and have a chat. And how Jimmy would love to be out, be out in this arena and the atmosphere that's created, that Ronnie creates, that Jimmy created in their time here. So I just wonder, Steve, how Ronnie will be feeling after the first four frames. Well, in the past on occasions, Ronnie's been very unhappy with anything other than perfection. I think he's more mature now. I think he can deal with that type of session a lot easier. He might be happy with it, but he can deal with it. Yeah, that's a very good point because a couple of seasons ago, I mean, he would really let that affect his, his game. Didn't play the best safety shot there. But fortunately for Ronnie, neither did Ricky Walden. Mm. Catching the yellow doesn't make that a very good safety. just meandered across to the right hand side Ricky Warden didn't do too much wrong there but it was enough to give perhaps Ronnie O'Sullivan a sniff he can just get past oh he's going to play the safety shot I think for a minute he could cut it in but... the 
think the top class players these days, John, as we mentioned earlier, don't risk going into the reds too strongly and pushing one over the opposite side. They know how dangerous their opponents can be. So a shot like that, don't want to be playing. It's a mistake. Mm, has the blue come to his rescue? Well, just about. Well, it's a close one. He may be able to just bend it slightly with a trace of left-hand side to get to the potting angle. Mm, just couldn't bend it enough. But he already knew that the cue ball... But where's that cue ball going? Oh! Well, Ricky Walden looking at balls here. He'd better have a look at the cue ball. I think he's angled. Rarely happens. And he's in trouble, I think. I don't think he can actually get to the right-hand side of the table. It's buried itself in the pocket. The jaws on these match tables are relatively sharp. So, therefore... He may be doing well to actually play to the left-hand side of the table. Looks like he's going to go for side cushion. Stroke of luck from Ronnie O'Sullivan's perspective. If he should get a leave from this, he's a bit under pace with this. Might have to have another go. Foul from the miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. So he'll try the same shot again, but he doesn't want to hit the red going. He wants to come off the top cushion. A bit narrow, this. Too narrow, was it? He might leave a red here. Foul, the miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, foot. Yes, yeah, so Ronnie will have it put back. The red he's trying to hit, he wants to come off the two cushions. But he wants to hit it from the top cushion. If he hits it just off the one cushion, he could knock the red on into a potable position. And if he slides by it, as he did right. last time... That red, yeah, that's what I'm checking. Are you happy there with it? Oh, yeah, if well, you got it now, it'll be for him to run, OK? He's going to warn okay him. There, he can hit a red. Didn't think he could hit anything. So referee Brendan Moore has warned him, if you don't hit a red this time... I'll have to award the frame to Ronnie. It's a tough one for the referee there. To it must be obvious that it uh, that he can hit the red. Yeah, he asked Ricky, and Ricky agreed. He said, "You can hit that red, can't you?" To the left of the pink, and he went, "Yes." So he said, "Well, I've got to warn you." Yeah, I think he was hoping Brendan hadn't spotted it. <laughs> well, I hadn't <laughs> spotted it. <laughs> But if you've got to hit that red that's in the open, how do you get it safe? <clears throat> Can you risk playing off the two cushions again? I think I'd, I think I'd play a fraction, a fraction thicker, a bit wider, if you can get past. But if you can hit the red, then he's more or less got to go for the red. You can sort of roll onto it, perhaps leave it in the... <clears throat> I'm not 100% I'm going to get past that knuckle. Well, that's why I asked with the first one, because that's the first thing that I looked at, mm. if you could hit that one. Yeah. I just don't want to play a full-on drop and then it go right, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Does that leave me? Well, <laughs> before, the, before you played the first one, like, that's the first thing I looked at, and I was sure you could hit the centre of that. OK. So, if anything, it may be slightly forward. You couldn't hit these, but you could hit that one centre. Go slightly forward, then. Yeah, because you could definitely do it. That's the first thing I looked at. OK, well, the referee said that the first time <coughs> he, he definitely could get through to the red. Ricky's now not too certain. He thinks if he plays for that red, he could catch the knuckle yeah. and it'll go off to the right. So he's moved it slightly out. What does it say? How do you get safe off this? Might be okay. He's not left anything easy. A 
that's a tough shot to get the cue ball out into open play. Beautifully played. Well, he couldn't have cued it better, could he? Could not have cued that any better. And Ricky will be there, sat there bemoaning his luck, really. It was only just the narrowest of gaps to get through. Not an easy break in prospect for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Red's a bit crowded. This is where I like watching Ronnie O'Sullivan play. He makes some, not saying it's guaranteed to happen, but he makes some very so. difficult positions look very easy when it comes to clearing the balls. And you wonder why you can't do it yourself. Eight. Nicely past the blue. Well, I wouldn't <clears throat> knock yourself too much, Steve. <laughs> You've made a few uh, unbelievable breaks in your time. You need a snooker brain. And Ronnie's certainly got one of those. And now there's a chance. Play this red to the left corner and play the black to the right corner. 30. And all of a sudden, a chance of a sizable break. 14. I think the red's going to. <coughs> excuse me. I think the black's going to. Uh, Twenty-one. Be potable. Twenty-two. Perhaps a fraction easier than it first looked at the top of the table. But it still requires perfect touch. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Couldn't risk running out now. He's got a little bit of work to do with the cue ball here. 38. And, well, it's not too bad. I think there's just a gap so he can get to the middle of the cue ball. Just. <laughs> 45. And this is where Ronnie O'Sullivan can be so hurtful 46. to his opponent. Ricky Warden would have known how difficult these balls were placed or, or how easily it would have been to have come unstuck in this break. And so far, Ronnie O'Sullivan hasn't put a foot wrong. It's like a challenge to Ronnie 53. O'Sullivan, I think. Yeah, it's, it's like a, unsolving the problem, solving the problem. Absolutely. 54. And he's now landed perfect on the blue. He's got enough loose reds to clinch the frame. Of course, he got a few points in foul shot from Ricky. So although he's 67 points in front, there's still a possible 83 remaining. 59. So he's looking for red color red. 60. And that looks to have gone a little bit awkward. I think he's going to be hampered by the red, just the right of the, the black. This black will put him 75 points in front, with 75 remaining. 50. Needs to slow up, and has done. Perfect. So just this red 67. to leave his opponent needing two snookers. But more importantly, I feel for Ronnie. 68. First time in the match when he's got in and made a frame winning contribution at one visit. And now you'd be surprised if he didn't make the century. 75. And remember, at the start of this 76. match, his career century total is 773. That puts him two behind 
Stephen Hendry in the all-time record? 83. 84. Just another little footnote, it's Stephen Henry's birthday today. So what a time 91. for Ronnie to equal or maybe pass. <laughs> oh, well, I'm building up. Well, I'm pretty yeah, team yeah. the easy yeah. red. But that won't be any satisfaction for Ricky Walden. Ronnie was a bit fortunate to snooker him as he did. But then what a superb break of 91 that was from the defending champion. He now leads by four frames to one. So close to another century break. Was there a big sigh of relief from somebody sitting in the studio, wasn't there, John? Did you hear it? Listen, he's too kind. It was of, as noisy as the rain. He's too kind a boy to go past his record today when it's his That's birthday. That's exactly right. He's, he's too conscious kind. of the fact that it's his birthday today. By yeah. the way, many happy returns. Thank you. Happy birthday Thank today. you. But back in the rhythm. Yeah, and the open in red. I mean, Steve said on commentary there, he, there's, there's difficult shots he just makes look so easy. This is really good cue. And the open in red off the side cushion, he just absolutely pures it straight through the middle, around the angles for the pink. Tough shot off the cushion. We've just been demoing a bit of that. It's not easy to do, but he's just pured that beautifully right round. And, of course, the rest is history. What is it about Ronnie? Because sometimes, you know, when we cover these tournaments, you know, after a mid-session interval, sometimes the first frame back, Stephen, and I'm thinking back to World Championships and recently at the UK Championships in York as well, he comes out of that dressing room and he seems to play the perfect frame of snooker in the next frame. Well, I, I said just before, he, he, he was going to get stronger if anything. He wasn't going to keep playing that, that, that poorly that, that he did in the first session. He was going to start you know, winning frames in one visit. Ricky's made it a little bit easy for him. He hasn't put him under, under that much pressure. But, um, but that, that was obviously more like it. If I was Ricky Walden here, I'd be, I'd be having a distinct change Ricky of attitude Walden's here. I'd be, I'd be trying to wait a few Shh. safeties thick. I mean, just open the balls up. Try and get scoring yourself. Because if it carries on the way this, there's only one result. Two more frames and Ronnie O'Sullivan will be through to the quarterfinals. Well, decent break off shot from Ricky Walden. But he's not covered the edge of the, the reds with the yellow. This is a good shot. Good line. Excellent length. <laughs> Little tap on the table there from. Ricky, you can get through to this red on the right-hand side of the table. It's one of those, though, you've got to catch it just right. Caught it a little bit too thick. Well, the yellow may have come to his rescue. I think if Ronnie wasn't hampered by the yellow, he may attempt the... Red to the left corner. Oh, well, now he can't get through to the one to the right corner. And hampered by the yellow as he was, couldn't risk trying to get the cue ball back to the balk end. So, Ricky, a little bit fortunate there, but when you fall one behind, you need a little bit of run of the ball. Yeah, I think you're entitled to a bit, especially after being angled in the last frame. an excellent shot. It really is. <laughs> and to me, that is the one difference between Ronnie and all the other attacking players we've had in the game. His safety play is so good. It matches every other department of his game to me. Yeah, and while the game has become more attacking, as Stephen Hendry was talking about, uh, Touching ball. the fact that Ronnie O'Sullivan's got a very good percentage game, I think sometimes Ronnie doesn't feel as if he's got to attack as much as the others. He's got such great control. Purposely playing down this side because he feels that the black 
is stopping an escape route down the left-hand side of the table. Bit of an impasse at the moment. It's a bit harder now. It's going to do some damage to the balls, and mm -hmm. it's only snuck its way past. What a mistake. Overhit that by so far. He'd be disappointed with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he had the right line, but as you say, overhit it so much. And he's left a nice, easy starter for Ronnie. One. Something he couldn't afford to do. It's a head scratcher again for Ricky. This match now slipping away from Ricky Warden. <laughs> oh, beautifully played shot. All of a sudden, Ronnie O'Sullivan smelling blood. Nine. Well, I would have preferred to have come a bit further back down the table and be straighter on the pink. But no problem. Now, is the pink still available into the corner? It is. In the UK Championship, Ronnie made his 13th maximum break. Of course, Marco Fu stole his thunder when he made one before he got here. 16. Played for the blue, but just a little short of pace. Has he got a slight angle? Well, he's getting down pretty quick, so he, he must have. Just able to force it down. Oh, another magnificently controlled shot. Yeah. 21. Power stun run through. To retain control of the cue ball. Get through that gap. He hasn't been sparkling today. Even Ronnie O'Sullivan's averages, perfor average performances are brilliant. And he's able to take off at any moment. I just sense as if... Oh, just sense as if he was getting there. He's got the red into the middle, I think. 29. Bit unlucky there, he didn't get on that red. Another red came and blocked it. He's getting closer to that 90% pot success now. Good. Didn't have to do much with the cue ball. Knew he had the pink to the left corner. He certainly upped his game here, John, and uh, I think perhaps the Ronnie O'Sullivan we see today, much more dangerous animal because... In the past, perhaps he's sort of given up for the day if it's not gone his way. But this is effectively a workmanlike performance by Ronnie O'Sullivan to get himself in the groove. 36. Going into some reds now, unless he can get on one of the loose ones. It's a bit unlucky. It was very unlucky. 42. Very thin cut he's got now. Very thin indeed. He's more or less obligated to go for a ball here. Unless he can see a safety shot, I don't think he'll be thinking that way. Yeah, with that red over the right corner, you don't see he can play anything but the pot here, but it's risky. Perhaps red into the green pocket with an element of safety across to the side cushion. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful, and exactly as you said, Steve, worked it out that he could play that red. 
As long as he put the cue ball near the left-hand side of the table, he'd be covering the red near the right corner pocket. But look at that, never touched a side. Ten out of fourteen. Forty-eight. Long pots. That's good. I always think with long pots, if you're getting two thirds of them, you're doing well. There's a lot of them are played as a shot for nothing. Now, can he hold it for the pink? He needs to stop or get a good kiss. He got 49. the good kiss. And you could see Ricky Walden there just puffing out his cheeks. He fears the worst. This is another frame that's gone, it appears. 55. Just put the commentator's 56. curse on this. I think this is a nailed on century break. Sixty three. Sixty four. Kick. Quick glance at the scoreboard. Just the blue needed. And that puts Rennie now 69 points in front with only 67 remaining and nicely on the next red. 69. 70. 3 reds, 3 blacks for the sentry without having to worry about the red in the 76. bottom half of the table. 77. Upping the pace very nicely, going through the gears, making this look now like an easy workout today. Brendan Moore just about getting the ball back on the spot before Ronnie's 85. down. So one good positional shot now on this red to get back on the black. And it'll be century break, 774. <laughs> One behind Stephen Henry's record. Thank you. 93. 774 it is. 100. about the red, the frame was over well before the then. So that was an excellent break, made in double quick time. And Ricky Walden, well, what he must be thinking as they leave the arena, because Ronnie O'Sullivan now, the defending champion, is just one frame away from a place in the quarter-final. He leads 5-1. Yes, and there's a reason why there was a massive cheer there here at Alexandra Palace because it was quite deafening actually here because it's significant, John, because he is now just one century break away from equaling the record held by this man, Stephen Hendry, 775 centuries. Phenomenal of the two players. I'm going to give him plenty of praise because he deserves it, that the two players way over 1,500 centuries between them is absolutely phenomenal. Yes, Ronnie's going to pass it. He's going to pass it this week, we'd think. Um, but the two players themselves deserve the utmost of praise for that record, which is just ridiculous. How does it feel when you're sitting here and we talk about you and you look at the graphic there of you standing there with the queue with all those century breaks and, you know, you know it's inevitable yeah, that yeah. he's going to go past it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it was one of, one of those records that, yeah, with the, the, the fact that, he, that Ronnie's playing it and, and, I, and I'm not playing it, it's, it's obviously going to go. Um, I think... Um, you know, people obviously look at titles and things that are, are quite important. I think other players appreciate things like century break records um, because it just shows the type of game that you play. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, it, it is a special thing. I enjoyed clearing the table and, and Ronnie, Ronnie's the same. You don't just want to win the frame, you want, you want to just pot every ball. Uh, when you were down doing your master's class a short time ago, we were talking about the interview that John Virgo did with Jimmy White. And there's a reason why this fella gets the crowd going and why they cheer every time he makes a big break and why he enters the arena. There's a reason. It's because he plays such great snooker. We were saying that perhaps there's too much caution 
in world snooker right now? Well, it's not. It's just the way he is. He plays with a fluency. He plays with a touch, a deftness around them. I mean, all the shots are played, and they're just played to such perfection. And we all know we've all played the game. He just makes it look ridiculously easy. In amongst the balls, the shots there. I mean, Steve pulled one shot where he played a stun run through off the blue to come back for the Reds, powered it in. I mean, that shot's just such a shot that not everybody can play and play to that standard. So this is what you get with him. It's fluent. It's quick. It's easy on the eye. And that's why he's 5-1 ahead. Fantastic crowd as well, by the way. Yes, we know the majority of them are here Thank cheering on Ronnie O'Sullivan, but rapturous applause there from Ricky Walden. 5-1 down, and yet he still gets a round of applause. One more frame, remember, Ronnie O'Sullivan is through to the quarterfinals. <coughs> Don't call out when they're at the table, please. And breaks off Ronnie, not a bad length, but he's left the edge of the cluster. So Ricky can play a straightforward safety, but he's got to be careful now. Can't afford any more mistakes. Yes, anybody watching at home who's been uh, a recent convert to the game of snooker, don't get the wrong idea when they're talking about caution amongst the players. It's only relative to the standards being played. If you went back to the 80s, the general standard was very much defensive. Going back even further, that was the order of the day. Most modern day players are highly aggressive. Not getting the best of luck, is he? Ricky Warden, it could have gone his way perhaps a bit better, but sometimes you make your own. Yeah, poor safety shot from Ronnie and fortunate to get away with it, but you know as well as I do, Steve. When you need a bit of luck at this game, you never get it. And a touching ball has made it quite comfortable now for Ronnie to get that cue ball tight under the ball cushion. A little bit pacey. But there's only the one red to hit. And that's the one on the right-hand side of the table. Didn't really want to leave a touching ball, Ricky Warden, but... I've got to deal with that now. Going off a side cushion in between pink and black. All black. Oh, just. <laughs> Tough on the referee. He was walking in for Brendan Moore as that was coming there close. Yeah, just feathered the red, didn't it? Simultaneous hit would have been a foul. Decent safety, that. Ronnie spotted one. Mm, and he'll be disappointed to it, it's so thick. So here's half a chance for Ricky. It's an easier pot, obviously, on the red if he cuts it into the middle, but that's not going to guarantee him position. To be certain of being on a colour, he'll have to play into this corner pocket. So there's a little bit more pressure on it. Nice and shot. Oh. Just got to play one shot at a time. I know it's an old adage, but that's all he can do. One shot at a time. Don't miss anything easy. We'll see where that gets you. Six. Well, in potting this red, he may well have cleared the path for the black to the same pocket, as you can see there. Seven. Good thinking there from Rick, Ricky Warden. Overrun the blue a fraction. Chance to go into the pack. But perhaps now is not the time, but he could very well be 
forgiven if he did. Not absolutely sure Ronnie would have gone into the pack there. I'd say it was right or wrong. Thirteen. Would have loved to have been another six inches further up the table and now He's got a bit more distance to manoeuvre the cue ball with. Yeah, and just looking at the highest break, Ronnie obviously with that 100 in the last frame, but 36, that's all that Ricky's got. And he's had opportunities. Now he needs to control this well and just the pace to 18. perfection if he's going to play for the black. Nineteen. He's come low on it. That's not perfect. I'm not sure why one person like that. Potting angle on the black. He needed to hit the red a bit thicker to 26. stop the cue ball at this half of the table. So a mid distance red to keep it going. Just about struggled in. He's okay now. Very important shot to get that for Ricky Warden, and now he should be opening the frame up with this. Cannon through the gap. Probably gone as badly as it could have possibly have gone, but... 34. He's still amongst them. He's amongst them, but it couldn't have gone much worse. Well, there's just a gap for the queue. It makes this shot a little bit easier. If it had been 35. hampered, but... He still was short on the blue, so he's not out of the woods just yet. But this blue will give him his highest break of the match so far. That awkward queuing took his concentration away from the, the white ball. Monstrous amount of side on that. Forty. Did get a lot of side spin on this. Look at the cue ball there. He hit the bulk line. Side spin still on there for the second cushion. Spun up the table. One more tricky shot to play. If he plays the red, he was just about to cure and he's decided against it. Going to keep the white ball in open play, not avoid any bad cannons. 41. Be nice to reply with a sentry here, wouldn't it, John? Yeah, it'd be lovely. I think you try and avoid a cannon on the red here, try and screw around off two cushions. Doesn't want to be too pacey with this. <coughs> He's okay. Worst way of the red to the left 46. middle. Forty-six. And of course, now he's at the point of no return. He might just relax and. Well, for the time being, forget about winning the match. Just proving to everybody what a good player he is. No slouch in the century break two. department. 187, if our stats are correct. 
Oh, 60 points to lead, 75 remaining. 60. Red and the black would do, but I'm not certain if he can get on the black off this red. Couldn't. So the blue and one more 61. red required. This blue will put him 66 points in front with 67 remaining. Played it well. Played it very well. 66. So this red took a 67 ahead with 59 left. Well played. 67. Took these well. Seventy-two. Thank you. This is his fifth appearance at the Masters for Ricky Walden. He did make a, 88. a century on his on one of his appearances. It was exactly a hundred. Got that red into play now. He's, I think he's come okay on the blue. Into the top pocket, screw back to the top cushion. Just want a little bounce, just a little bounce. 94. Red and the blue would get the ton. 95. Well done, Ricky. Well played. Five one behind. Could have been forgiven and thinking that the match was over, but stuck to his guns and every credit. Mm, I don't think the, the L. Well, he made a hundred last time. He was in the Masters. He's made a hundred, so that's his second century. He's still got a mountain to climb, but at least he's put another frame on the board. But Ronnie O'Sullivan still leads five frames to two. And for the first time, really, in the match, Steve, we've seen Ricky, what Ricky Wolling can do. I mean, okay, it came about by Ronnie playing a pot and catching it much too thick. This was the shot. Yeah, I think Ronnie thought he could get back down the table. He, he did catch it thick, so the cue ball had less pace. But it was still an excellent break from Ricky Walden, even though he was the wrong side of the blue on occasions. Uh, yeah, and this pot, I mean, he had one in the first frame of the match, didn't get in the jaws. But that one right in the heart of the pocket, nice angle on the blue, still had plenty to do, but made the century and won the frame in one visit. Yeah. He's left it late in the match to make the comeback. It's always on. What Ricky Wharton can do, John, is he can reel off frames pretty quickly and give himself a chance to get back in, that's for sure. Thank you, frame eight. Yeah, that would be to his advantage Ricky Walden because to break. he's a quick, quick player. I know this is best of 11 as against the final of the UK, but when Ronnie led Judd Trump 9-4, not many people were giving much hope for Judd, but all of a sudden he sparked into life. And then from 9-5 down made two centuries and an 80 to get us to 9 all. Certainly got the quality of Ricky Walden. May well be forced into this long red. Lot to top spin to get up for the blue. That helps, doesn't it? Yep. Helps if you get a few of those. Yeah, once he 
Mr. Red and got the double kiss. He was hoping it'd run safe, and it did. Due a bit, I think. Ronnie was thinking of trying to get the cue ball back to the ball, Ken, but he's going to leave a possible pot on, so maybe just trickling off this red. Couldn't risk going back to the ball, Ken. Ronnie will not take anything for granted. He knows how this game of snooker can turn on its head sometimes if you take liberties with it. It's a risky shot playing down the table. Well, I think the look on Ricky's face says it all. How do you hit the blue full in the face from there? But has he been fortunate? Not too sure which side he was trying to miss the blue on there. Surely on the left-hand side, but as it's turned out, He's got away with it. <laughs> Excellent cue ball. Puts a bit of pressure on this shot now for Ricky. The red closest to the top cushion. A half ball could get him back down the table. Cleared the black as well. <coughs> Nicely set up for another century. Thicker than intended there. That's why he's not reached the bought cushion. But not left anything easy. Easy safety shot on the red on the left hand side of the table for Ricky. But not the best cue ball once again. Only just reaching the bought line. It has cut off the escape path down the left hand side of the table. Yeah, but it hasn't cut off the chance of a pot, possibly. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's probably as far out as Roddy's been all season on a shot, I should think. Yeah, and the thing was, if he catches it fuller, he'd have probably got the cue ball in a better position, but missed it by so much. The red came down the table, and a nice easy starter for Ricky. Would you believe that? How has he missed that? Well, oh, that was tricky. That was tricky, but just hampered slightly. He couldn't get the bridge hand exactly where he wanted it. And he had to cue it very straight. There you see the yellow just stopping him getting the, the bridge hand where he would like, causing him to miss the red. So another twist in this frame. It's not absolutely certain for Ricky Wall to, to get on this black, but he'd hope to be getting around the back of the red. Thank you. Struck it well. One. The two reds just above the black are problem reds for Ricky. Good. 
No, he's struggling. He's struggling at the moment. He made a, a good under break in the last frame, but he missed that easy red in the ball, Ken, and that was a, a very poor positional shot off the black. I think he was trying to get round the back of it. Yeah, he was. And he just, just misjudged it as well. What's he spotted here? Possible pop maybe to the right middle, but he should have been on something a lot easier than this. Very nice. Right. Not nice where it's ended up, though. This is a tough shot. He's going to play position as well. Ricky Walden, nine. Well, this time, he's not going away with it. Close to that yellow, he nearly dropped. Well, he's just seen if the pink is available into this left corner. He's got the easy start of red. And this pink, it's very tight. Is there all the pocket available? I don't know. Certainly available into the middle. As I say, he's got a nice easy starter, but I suppose worst way he's got the yellow over the corner, but he'd like to be on the pink at the business end of the the table to make the sizable contribution he's looking for to clinch frame and match. It tells you how hard the the table is, how long Ronnie's thinking about this. So he's gonna leave himself an angle on the yellow to swing the cue ball round. Three cushions, perhaps. One. Perhaps two, but he'd be looking to clear a few balls from around that black spot area as quick as he can. Mm, needs a bump off the middle pocket. And he got one. Three. Needs to slow down this. Needs to slow down a bit. Yep. He just stopped short of the port line, which means he's got a chance of the yellow. He really hit that well. There's the possibility that Ronnie's got the right angle to try and shift those two reds to the right of the black. It's going to be a hard break without the black in play. Obviously, he's got reds that go as well, but he may be going for this. Yep, exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah, I think the problem was if he played that camera on the two reds and look Six. where he's finished, that's absolutely inch perfect. If he'd have picked it up with his hand, he could not have put Seven. it in a better place. Now, he'd be looking for an angle on this black just to nudge those two reds into play. Has he got that angle? Still going to be a tough century break, though, isn't it, John? <laughs> well, particularly with that red <laughs> near the brown. But you'll be thinking, can I win the frame and match at this visit? That's all he will have on his mind. Couldn't 14. disturb those two reds to the right of the black. Not off that shot. 50. And not off this one either. All the pocket. Close look. Will anything go? 22. That certainly does. It might just go, but the trouble is he can't really do anything with a cue ball. Well, he's looking at a red to the a fine cut oh. to the right middle. Well, can he get round the back of the black with a bit of side? I don't know. That's where he's got the red. And he's just about on the black. Not perfect. <laughs> this 
Pink's getting into Fair. open territory as well, which would help proceedings. Yes, and I think Ricky Walden sat in his seat now. He's fearing the worst. 31. It was a big day for Ricky. Whenever you play Ronnie or Sullivan, particularly in London, you know it's going to be a baptism of fire. But uh, he's had his chances, and it's just the disappointment of not producing your best that is the hardest thing to bear. Just coming up to the two hour mark of the match. 44. Never expected it to be a long one. 45. Still yet to resolve the problem of those two reds that have been there all the time 52. next to that black. This judgment got away with it. 53. Yeah, hand up to him. Apologise to Ricky. Can he get any worse, Ricky's thinking? We'd expect Ronnie to work out a way to get these two reds apart. 59. Can't guarantee getting position on them, though. But Six. the pink will put him 57 points in front with only 51 remaining. And he has disturbed the Reds. 66. Oh, that lifted up. That drifted up. That was in when he hit it. That definitely drifted up. Ricky Walden needs two snookers. Just watch this. That drifted up. Yeah, it has done a week a bit. Left the top cushion. Uh, well, you never pocket. mentioned it until today. One. Wow. Yeah, no value in playing position on this red. I mean, because there is a red behind the brown, so play the snooker on this Eight. one. As I say, two snookers required at the moment. Oh, that wasn't great. That wasn't a great attempt. He needed to get that tight. Ricky Walden, eight. Just let him off the hook there, a fraction. Ronnie won't mind leaving as well. Is it going over the pockets? Oh, he just pulled away, but he won't mind oh, Ricky old... potting this red because... Uh, and now what does Ricky do? <laughs> yeah. If he pots the red, OK, he might be able to get on the black, but how does he get near that red and the brown? Needs an angle. Yeah, he'll have to play the cannon, won't he? He'll have to play the cannon on the what? brown. And I hope he doesn't knock the red in. There's no other way around this for me. He can play to the ball cushion, but then where's the safety shot? Yeah, he's got to play the cannon. Well, he got into it too much. Is there enough of a gap? Eight. So he can push it past the brown? Don't think so. I would imagine after this shot, Ronnie O'Sullivan has control tactically of the table. Ricky Walden, eight. The thing Ronnie's got to be wary of here, if he just nestles up to the red, that he doesn't leave it touching. That's the only problem I can foresee here. Hmm. Well, it's a bit dangerous, it no. the, Yeah, I wouldn't be playing it off the bolt cushion if I could avoid it. If you can play it thin off the bolt cushion. Well, it's OK, he did get it thin. This is why billiards never caught on, really, isn't it?
not too sure that uh, if Ricky asks for a stalemate, <laughs> the referee's <laughs> going to be too receptive. Yeah, play for a re rack. That would be the thing, <laughs> wouldn't it? Well, and it's advantage Ronnie O'Sullivan now. Yeah, just flick the red behind the brown. I think Ricky fears the worst, but obviously he's got to play on because he's just hoping he gets a chance, but I don't think the handshake's too far away here. Ronnie can make it even more difficult for him now. Well, I say that. Maybe a possibility in Ronnie there. You see the grimace because he's given Ricky an opportunity. If he can just hit this red correctly, he could get the snooker behind the brown. A bit careless from Ronnie that. Yeah. Necessarily think he will get the snooker behind the brown. Then it? yeah, it's a bit. It's if the brown's going to move. That's why he's hit it hard, and he's got snooker behind the yellow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll just remind you, Ricky Walden needs two snookers. But if Ronnie was to miss this and leave a free ball, one snooker would be sufficient. He has missed it. Now has he left a free Foul. ball? Ricky Walden four. Is it a free ball? I'll tell you what, it's close. Free ball. Free ball. Black wow. ball. Playing the black is not easy. But this black will count as a red. If he pots it, it'll be a colour to follow. And in goes the black. What a turnaround this could be. One. Well, Ronnie looked over the line all by the shouting. We may have a new favourite for this frame. Ricky turned down the blue to try and get the brown back on the spot. I don't think this... Five. Does it go past? It's tight. Oh, it flies in. Yes, it does. It goes past the pink. What a chance. For needing two snookers. <laughs> under hit that. Under hit that black. The position on the black not perfect here. He needs a good shot to get on the yellow. Oh, excellent. Well, yeah, was able to hold it. I didn't think he could. So the six remaining colours 13. to keep his hopes alive. It was a poor red, but he's recovered very well. It's all very well getting 15. the snooker, getting the free ball, but then you've got to clear up. There's pressure on you to clear up. Ricky's at the point of no return. 18. That's not great. It's not ideal. He's over the top of the blue, I feel, a bit here. Well struck. 22. Well. Who'd have thought this? Twenty-seven. Pink and black required. Thirty-three. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. What can happen in this game of snooker? Ronnie O'Sullivan looked home and dry. He was past the winning post. Two snookers were needed. He got the free ball. What a clearance. Ronnie O'Sullivan still one frame away from victory. 5-3.
It's the first time the rookie Walden has taken three frames from Ronnie O'Sullivan in a head-to-head -head match since the final of the Shanghai Masters in 2008. And we said earlier that if Ricky Walden wants to stay in this match or even win it, he has to dig in and show some character. I don't know how he's won that frame. I've got to be honest with you. I mean, me and Stephen were talking there off air and we were saying to him, why is Ronnie not just moving the red and the brown completely? Why not just smash the two out of the way? Because when that's tippy-tappy and the balls are so close together, you could end up in a situation where... You know, you could end up having a snooker against you. It's one of them ones I thought he'd have just played thick, moved the red and the brown out the way, so there's no chance of any messing the boat, and put the cue ball down the table and say, after you. What was that down to then, Stephen? Do you think that's down to a lack of concentration? No, I, 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 he seemed to just outthink himself. I, it's like, um, you know, I mean, he was, Ricky needed, what, two or three snookers at that stage? And the, the, the very first time when Ricky's potted the black and gone up to when the red and brown over the hole, Ronnie's first shot, as John says, just smash him out of the way. Why even bother getting involved in that sort of battle? So uh, it's, it's just like he tried to think of a clever thing to do. Do you not also think, John, that perhaps there was only one man who thought this frame is not over out there? Because I just got the feeling, looking out at the crowd and also looking yeah. at Ronnie's body language, that it was all over. I mean, let's be honest, he, 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 need, he deserved a little bit of luck. He's had bad luck today with the kick and various things. So he got, a, he got when he moved the red and the brown together, he got a snooker behind the yellow. But then Ronnie compounded it by playing the snooker in such a way that he left the free ball, which was like... You know, unforgivable, really. Mm. So what happens next, then? Is there a recovery on for Ricky Walden here, or do you think it's just a matter of time, Stephen? Um, no, I, don't, I mean, Ronnie's experienced enough. He's, he's been there too many times. He's not going to let something like that bother him. It will, will irritate him, but no, I'd, I'd be surprised if he didn't win the next frame. But, it, I mean, he, he was in, and, and like, it, the, the red there, John pointed out, the table did drift, the, the, the red that he missed. Um, you know, the match should have been all over. You're looking at... Well, his facial expression there, you can see there's an element of annoyance. Well, he'd, he'd, he'd be a little bit annoyed about it, Jason, to be honest with you, because he, he knows full well it should have been all over. He should have been sitting in here next to us, chatting away, and now he's got to do some more work. Thank you, frame nine. Okay, one more frame still. Ronnie sees Ronnie O'Sullivan set up a quarterfinal tie against Marco Fu on Thursday. Well, there's the wonderful trophy for the winner of the Masters, but well, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think I'd be saying Ronnie O'Sullivan is breaking off in frame nine. But stranger things have happened. Wonderful trophy. through the gap just enough distance away from the bulk cushion for Ricky Walden to stun this in got to be cued accurately though very nicely played One. Six. Best he could have hoped for there, I think, to get a leave on a red. Now, what we know about this table, it's not that easy to get that along the cushion. He... Ricky Walden, six. I don't know if it was on his mind that they're rolling away to the side cushion a bit, that he played that thick, but obviously on that type of shot, it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. I think he's got the cover. I don't think Ronnie can get through to the red. So running down the table, use the green as the blocker. Looks as though he's done that. And in this situation, perhaps Ricky Warden's best course of action is to try and open up reds, push them to the left side to try and get them to cover each other Unless he can guarantee getting that cue ball behind the green. <coughs> Struck that pretty thin, but still red's moved over to the left side. Mm, he's left a gap though, hasn't he, between green and blue. And if Ronnie can knock this long red in, he'll be on the black to the opposite corner. 
He's got his hand on the table. One good pot here. And what a chance he'd have. In goes the red. Solid. One. Looking at long pot success, that's pretty good. Ronnie will be very pleased with his long pot success. There'll be other departments of the game where he'll be a little bit disappointed, but here's his chance now to clinch frame and match. One thing about it, he won't be frightened when he sees the winning line. Eight. He's seen Nine. it on many occasions and, and flew by it. But you've still got to do it. Sixteen. Just checking where he's going to have to leave the cue ball. He's going to have to use the spider here. But he doesn't have to do anything with the the white, so... Just knock the red in. He's just checked where he'd like to leave the cue ball to leave a nice angle on the black. Thanks. 17. After what happened in the last frame, he'll be taking nothing for granted. He'll be doing everything due care and attention. He should have finished his press conference by now. Twenty-four. I'm not quite certain which red he played on, but there is one to the. The corner here. Twenty-five. Didn't want to play it too gently <coughs> to play for the blue, but nicely on the green. Just screw down the right hand side of the table. Inch perfect. Ronnie I still have him mentally very strong in positions like this. Situations where his opponent's coming back at him. Is it that one? 29. Have oh, you got a kick or something on that? It was a very strange Ooh. contact there. I think you got a kick and the stun run through didn't exactly work. Great recovery. Now, the question is does this red go to the corner? 36. It's tight. It's that tight. He's looking at the possibility of a plant. looking at the plant and there's a bit of distance between the two balls and they're not in a direct line and to bite the bullet Ronnie O'Sullivan 36 and to bite the bullet <laughs> didn't want to risk the, the plant can't blame him for that but it was a match winning opportunity he's let slip by player is happy when he plays a straightforward safety shot and catches a ball colour. OK, he may not have left a, a pot on, but you, you leave your opponent with his hand on the table, 
You know, expect him to play a better safety shot than the one you've played. And that's exactly what Ricky Walden's done. Well played. Close, but not good enough. Called it too thick. Just about got away with it. She's pretty thin. <coughs> Nicely played. Ronnie with the same problem, gotta catch this red thin. Gotta avoid the kiss on the red near the cushion. And he's got to avoid the kiss on the green, which he hasn't done. So as I say, every time you catch your ball colour full in the face, it's not going to be a, a telling safety. If Ricky Warden could get his hand, his bridge hand, on the table nicely, probably would have gone for that red. Quickly around the table, Ricky Warden to check that he hasn't left it up. Is it through the gap? Yeah. I mean, he can't see it, but he can swerve it round, and he's got a good chance to pot it. It's a sort of slow, lazy swerve round the blue. Might just be able to see it. Normal. It's tight, but just a fraction of side. One. Played it net well and he controlled it well enough to be on the pink. See the side just starting to take effect as it was coming down to the red. So this is the opportunity that Ronnie was looking for. As I say, Seven. how he didn't win the last frame, I don't know. That's time, two hours, 20 minutes, just over. Eight. This black to go 46 points in front. And you feel enough reds in the open. Not to make it a formality. 15. Just come at the wrong angle here. May have to play for the pink into the middle. 16. Which wasn't a problem. Dear me, 16. banging the table. Frustration. Can you blame him? Another chance. Missed. One. Just wider the mark and he wasn't happy. One could blame him. Bang, bang Eight. on the table. Nine. 
Well, this is an amazing turnaround, Steve. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen, do you? Cannot predict games of snooker. Ricky Walden has got the balls as good as you could get for an opportunity to go just one frame behind. 60. Okay, the red on the top cushion. Be nice if that was a bit further away from the cushion, but. 70. Didn't really want to be away from the black here. He's got to get the right angle on the pink. Shouldn't be hard. 24. Also, with what we know, he doesn't want to be rolling that red along the top cushion. He'd rather have an angle to punch it in. A little bit straighter on this red would have been ideal. 16 points behind now. 31. But he's played it nicely. 31. And he's got the perfect angle on the black to drop on the last red. Just needs an angle of some kind. And he's got it. So a red and a black. 38. To make the points all square. 39. And after the black, he'll need up to and including the blue to keep this match alive. 46. Well, he got a big bounce off the cushion there. A massive bounce. Bit of chalk on the cue ball. Got in the, between the cue ball and the cushion. Flew off the side and now he's not ideally placed on the yellow. I think he can probably just drop it in. But you want to play the shot a more, more positive way than this. He's got to roll it in very slowly if he feels he can do that. Played it nicely. Thank you. 48. Quick glance at the scoreboard. Green, brown and blue to really make Ronnie suffer. 51. I said a few frames ago, you never know what can happen at snooker. It can just be turned on its head with just one shot. Ronnie 55. had two good chances in this frame to clinch it. Well, we've come to expect Ronnie to celebrate. Sixty-six. Only usually a great clincher of frames and matches, but he's been put to the sword here. Seventy-three. Ricky Walton, only Ricky one frame behind now. Well, Ricky Walden was involved in a marathon match this time last year in this round against Barry Hawkins. Is this going the same way? Well. It's a strange game, Snooker, and for all the you know, for all money, it looks like he's home and hosed. He's going to be coming here chatting away. All of a sudden, probably played the wrong shot on the red and the brown, and all of a sudden he's in there. Then he's got a pink in the middle, and you had a little inkling he might have missed this, didn't you? Yeah, I just find, I just could sense a little bit he wasn't getting perfect position. And these ones, when you've got such a long cue action like Ronnie has, the slightest bit of deceleration, it, you, the side just takes effect, and you, and you miss some thin, and that's what happened there. But all, together with. Um, Obviously, the previous frame, he knew he should have already won. So, so perhaps a little bit of twitchiness coming in. And all credit to Ricky, by the way, because that wasn't an easy clearance. You know, because of the circumstances, OK, you can argue the balls are in mostly impossible positions, but you've still got to go and do it. You know, it's easy in here. We haven't missed a ball in here for ages, but you've got to go and do it out in the auditorium. He did it. But did you detect a change in Ricky as well? Did you notice his body language as well? Because he's looked pretty down, hasn't he? Especially before the mid-session interval as well. But suddenly, when he realises he's in, when he's in the balls, he looks an entirely different player. Well, he's been chucked a couple of lifelines, hasn't he? 
because he knows full well himself. I mean, he's been he's been on the other side of it before. He's been in front of matches and it looks like he's going to win and hasn't clinched it. And then, then someone's come back against him. So he'll know exactly what Ronnie's feeling like. Stephen, have you detected a change in Ricky Walden, the way he's taking this match on now? Slightly similar to Judd Trump Thank in the UK Vincent. final. When you're that far behind, you sort of relax a bit. You know, you know, you sort of backs up against the wall. You can't afford any more or mistakes. But I agree with John. He's been given lifelines. Um, but it just shows you the pressure Ronnie's under as well. And remember, Ricky Walden absolutely destroyed at this venue last year against Ronnie O'Sullivan, 6-0. It is 5-4. Yeah, a decent break-off shot from Ricky. His hopes are well and truly alive now in this match. Catching the ball colour. Once again with a safety, he's usually so good at missing those ball colours, Ronnie. <laughs> it was a half-hearted attempt at the pot, but if you're going to play those pots, if you're going to miss them, miss them too thin. That's what encouraged Ronnie to play what? that pot, as long as he's not hampered by the green. He should be OK, but can he just cue past the green as we watch this again? It was just perfect, wasn't it, to find the gap to get the cue ball back to the balk end. It's one red that goes into the left corner, and Ronnie O'Sullivan's played that so well. He's... Five. He's not on it. He struck it so nicely. Wait, I might go, but it's a very risky shot, and we haven't seen Ronnie playing too many risks. Ronnie O'Sullivan, five. Yeah, just picking up the point that Stephen Henry made in the studio that, that Ronnie's just getting a little bit frustrated because he's just not getting the, the cue ball exactly where he wants it. And if you start overhitting, then you make allowances and you just underhit slightly, and it just affects your flow. It just breaks your rhythm. As I mentioned at the end of the last frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan is usually rock solid when it comes to closing matches out, but circumstances can sometimes play their part. He was one red away that drifted from clinching the match. A couple of loose positional shots. So perhaps it's orange alert for Ronnie. Once again, catching a ball colour full in the face has left Ronnie a chance here. Now he's knocked in a, a long red. In the last frame he knocked in a long red like this. Didn't have to do anything with the cue ball, just pot the red. Not this time. A gettable but tough opening red now for Ricky Walden. One. too far. Mm, he, I think when it Eight. came off the first cushion he's already did it perfect but then it just seemed to spring off the second cushion. We've not seen many bounces in this match but looks like he's had a couple there. He was walking round and then he, he just stopped in his tracks. Okay he's got this one to the right corner but will he run into the black and lose position? Hmm. He did run into the black and didn't judge the cannon correctly. So that's end of visit. Just a safety shot to play. Just couldn't afford to hit it any softer than that. He knew what he was doing. Just 
hoping that black didn't go to the side cushion. Ricky Walden, ninth. A little bit of a reprieve there from for Ronnie. If Ricky Warden could have made a very quick fire break there, Ronnie would have been reeling at five all. Foul. Lost control of the cue ball again. Ricky Walden, four. Yeah, another long pot that was a long, long way away. Mm. Turning into a tough day for both players. Didn't expect that. No, I think it's getting a little bit easier for Ricky Walden because, well, on more than three or four occasions, he must have thought he was out of this. Well, and what a miss that was. It was a little harder than it looked on the TV. But catching that near jaw is... Guaranteed recipe for failure. Yeah, and I detected just a slight bounce there. I don't know if it was a heavy contact. Now, Ronnie's got to put all this frustration behind him now. He's been offered a lifeline himself here. He's given a few to his opponent. Well, Ricky has given him one. Can he make the most of it? And Ricky... Shakes his head. Struck that very well. Eight. I think he's got high enough on the red that he can successfully get back on the black. Nine. And a nice little cannon now. Should open up more reds. I think he can slide past to get the cannon. If he does choose the red into the left corner, he could open up the reds even more. 16. Pop this screw back for black or pink. 17. Yeah, I think he'd have preferred the pink, but the pink won't go into the left middle now, so there's a little bit of pressure on this black. I know we're talking about Ronnie O'Sullivan, one of the greatest players ever, but there's pressure on this. Solid, right in the heart of the pocket. Now he's given himself the chance to put all those mistakes, lifelines he's handed his opponent. 24. And a chance now to win frame and match at this visit, and Ricky Walden knows it. Twenty-five. Hasn't played too many left-handed shots this match. Struck that as if he'd played the whole match left-handed. It's not just the fact he can play left-handed, he hits the ball so positively as well. Thirty-one. Okay, the pink's now tied up. Thirty-two. Got into that a little bit too much, but I think he's 45. okay. He's not absolutely in perfect. Can he get through to this red? Just about 46. So this black will put in 45 points in front with 67 remaining. Two more reds and colours. 
That's what's required. 54. Well, he's recovered his composure superbly here, Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's what you expect of champions, but you keep on having to reassert yourself at this game. He may, he may feel as if he hasn't had a good performance today, but um, you know, there's different ways to uh, impress. And the way he's taken these so far has been excellent. And that's the frame and match winning ball. That puts him 54 points in front with 51 remaining. It has to be said that Ricky Walden missing that red in the middle was a golden opportunity. It offered Ronnie this chance and he's taken it very well, but Ricky will be kicking 67. himself because he had a chance to really put the pressure on the defending champion. 68. Ronnie's gone a little bit through the mill, a bit of his own making, you have to say. But he'll be just pleased now to be across the line and into the quarter-final. 75. Well, of course, the only thing now that remains to be seen is whether Ronnie O'Sullivan can convert this into a, another century which would equal Stephen Hendry's. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. Well, somehow he's got to disturb that yellow and brown. Oh. Somehow he's got to flute the yellow. Eighty-nine. You never know. You never know. There's six pockets on the table. Time record of centuries. Yes! Happy birthday, Stephen! <laughs> Unbelievable! You couldn't make it up! 109. What a match! It had twists, it had turns, it had mistakes! I'm going to say Steve Graham on that one also. This crowd have been enjoying one of the matches and one of the yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. The most amazing frames I've ever seen. No, Ronnie no, O'Sullivan no, no, no. through the quarterfinal, six frames to four, and equals the all-time century break record. What a game! Well, sometimes you know, John Parrott. We're so lucky to be doing what we do because sometimes you watch live sport in a very privileged position and what a moment there. Every ball that was potted there yeah. after the fluke uh, no. greeted with an unbelievable shot. What a way to do it. What a way to get oh, to no. 775 centuries. Ever the showman, isn't he? I mean, honestly, if there's any... I mean, flukes like that don't happen to mere mortals. They just happen to people like him. And uh, as I say, to equal it, he's a good lad, though. He didn't beat it on your day on your birthday. Yeah. He just equaled it. So he, didn't, he, was, he was thinking about it. That was an incredible you. moment, Steve. I mean, even you were smiling here in the studio because that was just... Absolutely incredible. <laughs> well done, Bob. <laughs> nice yellow. Congratulations, Ronnie. I mean, that was just amazing, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Oh, I don't know what, whether it's the match or whether it's equaling Stephen's record. I don't know what one you're talking about. <laughs> I'm talking. Well, let's forget about the match oh. for just a moment. We'll come to that in just a moment. But, you know, you've equaled that great man's yeah. record of 775 centuries in the most dramatic and remarkable of ways. Yeah, I thought it was sort of, um, I could have had it earlier on, you know, I missed the red on 90 odd and, you know, you start chasing records, you start to sort of make silly mistakes, I thought you put it out of your mind and obviously you yeah, end up doing it on a fluke on the other, as you <laughs> yeah. like. Well, we've asked you how you're feeling, how are you feeling, Stephen? Uh -huh. 
I, I'm, I'm honestly not bothered. It's a matter of time. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully I'm not quality commentator or anything. The next one he does. <laughs> we, thought, <laughs> we thought it was very good of you not to do it on his birthday, to go past him on his birthday today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it today? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, there was a great moment. Obviously, we won't dwell too much on the flu. There's a great moment that John Parrott and I were laughing at because Ricky Walden was coming out, wasn't he? Yeah. To shake Ronnie's hand. Obviously, yeah. at that point, you yeah. hadn't equaled the record. Yeah. And Ricky yeah. sat back down yeah. and you started laughing. Well, I had a bit of run through the match as well. So, you know, to, when you're getting a little bit of luck, you think, oh, I could, I could fluke this one, you know. So, but it was, yeah. Well, many congratulations to you. And you've mm. done it on live television as well. So, wonderful. Well, it's only equaled it. In the context of the match, though, I mean, mm. what happened? Bit of a shaky start. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm, um, I'm, I thought my levels are not as high as they was 18 months ago, you know. So I've scraped over the line, you know, in the UK, you know. I was I was lucky there, you know, in a few matches. And, you know, you, you have to, you know, these guys are playing like week in, week out, you know what I mean? And, that's, you know, when I was doing that, my my highest level was higher, my not so bad game wasn't so low. But at the moment, I'm definitely not, nowhere near I was 18 months ago. And, uh, you know, but why I, is that? Is there a reason for that? Right? I just don't play enough tournaments, you know. I, you have to play, you know. You look at what the standard of darts, and that's only because they're playing week in, week out, you know. And it's the same with snooker now. That's one good thing what Barry's done with making so many tournaments. Everybody has risen their game. And, um, and unless you play matches, you know, you just, I'm just going through the motions a lot of the time in practice. Anyway, it's the strangest game though, Ron, isn't it? You know, all of a sudden it looks like it's all over. You should be coming in here speaking to us, press conference. All of a sudden, one yeah. frame with yeah. two snookers goes funny. Oh. The next minute, you, you sort of lost control. Well, that's what happens when you're not confident and you're not like, you know, you're not firing on all cylinders. Silly little things happen to you and it's sort of like, you know, I know, I, you know, if I want to, you know, maybe play more tournaments. Might not do it, I don't know. But I was going to say to you, I suppose it's over to you really. As yeah, maybe yeah. you could play more tournaments well, I have if you wanted to. to. Well, I'd have to, to kind of find out for myself to see whether my game can get back up to where it was 18 months ago but at the moment you know I'm just kind of uh, scraping through a few victories and you can't keep doing them you can't keep getting away with it you know what I mean did you feel different when you came back after the mid-session interval because the boys in well no because my foot was a bit different. sore I, I kind of didn't have my brace on enough it was getting a bit sore on my ankle you know I just thought I'd try and not wear it but then it was so at the interval I put my ankle on I felt much more stable in my, in my well, feet in. I'm just going to talk about th this crowd as well because obviously mm. They were here today. No disrespect to Ricky Walden. We said this at the start of the programme, but they they it's a sellout crowd and they're here to see you. I mean, what sort of impact does that have on you? It's pressure, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, I'd rather not play, you know, in, in London to be honest. I'd rather play in someone else's backyard because, you know, you've got everything to gain and, and you know, I like to prove people wrong, you know, whereas here it's sort of like the expectation is that bit higher and uh, it's amazing actually because the, the, the amount of people just outside our studio here who are waving to us here and taking photographs. I mean, this doesn't happen every single day. They obviously love watching Ronnie play it. I mean, it's incredible crowd still here, just uh, all waving and shaking hands. It's incredible. From what you've seen so far, though, John, and you've seen almost everybody now, is there anybody you think you can challenge this fella, even though he's not playing as well? Well, he, as, he, he'll say there is because there's lots of good players, the top 16 in the world, you know, and on any given day, these players can all play. So, you know, you never know how the balls are going to break up. Obviously, he's the favourite. Um, he's, he's played well, you know, in the tournaments to win the UK and everything. And he's, of course, he's the favourite, but he'll know as well as anybody there's players here who can play. We should say thank you as well because the last time you played Ricky Walden, you finished after 62 minutes. I think we were on air for another four hours. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you were going home to do the school run. So, what are you going to do tonight then? What's the plan? I don't know. I don't even know what the time is. I'm just going to rest, chill out, and just kind of like just get ready for Thursday now, you know. So, yeah, still just happy to be still in, to be honest with you. Great to see you. Good luck to you. Marco Fu next in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. A quick look ahead to tonight's match, which you can watch on the red button. It's Barry Hawkins taking on Ali Carter. And a welcome return to Ali Carter as well. He says it's a dream come true just to be back here. Fantastic news that he's here on the circuit and he's fit and well and healthy. And whatever the result, does it really matter? He's playing snooker again. Stephen? Yeah, I think back to his day job and back to concentrate on what he does best and, and playing a snooker and he'll be absolutely delighted walking out here tonight. Boys, thank you very much indeed. Ronnie, well done. Many congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. Through to the quarterfinals. Ronnie will play Marco Fu in Thursday's first quarterfinals. So do join Hazel tonight for highlights 11.20. And of course, if you do want to watch Barry Hawkins take on Ali Carter, it is live on your red button. We shall see you then. All of us here, bye for now.